to Atlanta, to New York, and into all your homes tonight. Thank you for tuning in, and welcome, one and all, to Clown Town, your one-stop shop, sorry, your one-stop shop for most things Adult Swim. You can call it a revival of sorts, but please stop calling it Adult Swim. This is Adult Swim Central on ACPN. Sponsored by Boylan's. It's a root beer, and it's, it's other things, too. We are covering everything tonight that happened this weekend at Adult Swim Con, and Comic-Con at home with our own fan panel of sorts, talking about some of your favorite Adult Swim shows and taking your questions into the in the chat there. Hi, I'm John J. Uh, I do things, I did stuff down here. I didn't practice this too well, but, and I should probably take put my notes away. Uh, I'm John, thank you for being here. Thank you so much uh, for being part of the show. Uh, brought to you by the Art Comedy Pop Culture Network's Twitch. We are glad to be a part of their brand and of entertainment and hope that we can do that for you tonight, possibly in the future. We have a great panel of pa- lineup of panelists and guests tonight, so let's get introductions on the way. We have these awesome people here that we're going to chat with. Uh, I didn't write anything more than that. <laughs> So, so we're winging it now. We're winging it now. Um, with us tonight, uh, starting with the Helper Network, uh, we got Rilo W. Ward, Professor Brock Savage, Baron Beast Lamode, and Vaude Villain. How are you guys doing tonight? All right. I was going to have uh, your your names pop up on this, but that's too much work right now because I just did a shot of crack and rum. So, f- fuck it. <laughs> uh, yeah, kids, there is language in the, involved in this, as, as you probably could have known from the uh, video that aired before this, which I am proud of because I used to test in Premiere Pro and it paid off. Yeah, they asked me what an elephant was. I was like, I I know things. I I know words. No collusion. <laughs> oh, the the five dollar foot long. Close enough. All right, M- moving on. Uh, we have our friends from interdimensional RSS, which I don't have their names up. Damn it. Damn it, videos. Brandon and Travis, welcome to the show. How are you guys doing tonight? We are, we are fantastic. So, so, so thankful that you invited us on, uh, that you have us here. Uh, Brandon, speak, 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 speak
Oh, th thanks for, thanks for coming. I was like, you know what? Let me let me invite all these up. Let's share the podcast love because it's always just been Swimcast and AS Central, and this is like I said at the beginning. This is kind of a revival for us because we've been gone for so long, and Swimcasts are so few and far between that. Let's let's share the podcast love, you know, and, and let's like I'm just clicking around the different people, <laughs> um, and. Speaking of Swimcast love, uh, well, Trish isn't here yet. She'll probably, like, flounder in in, like, any kind of time, but uh, she'll be here soon. Uh, but my other co-host from Swimcast who was able to come on, uh, Mr. Jason, my my panel master from New York Comic Con. How are you, sir? Great. I'm all right. How are you? Good. That, 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 is the most, that is the most important thing is the beer. Also, like I like I said before, I mean I don't have a beer, but we're sponsored by Boylan's. They got root they got root beer, they got like uh, soda. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, um, did I not? Oh, 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 oh! I'm sorry. We are most important our guests tonight uh, so far, unless someone else uh, ends up staggering in. Oh crap. I forgot to I forgot to unmute. I'm sorry. I'm a little drunk. Everyone everyone say hello. There we go. Hi. Hello. <laughs> hey. Oh hey. hi. My bad. Opa. Can you hear us now, Twitch? My bad. Technical difficulties, guys, but I did I did it <laughs> I did at some point introduce everyone. Uh I We're don't here. I don't remember everyone's names except that they are here and they're awesome. And yeah, I, I mean, I made a, I made a really shitty joke earlier, so this it actually evens out, so works out. You didn't even have to bring it up. <clears throat> well, I, I'm looking, I'm looking at the. We'll have to talk about I, I had to bring it up because I'm I'm like looking at the Twitch chat and I'm like they're like uh, I, our, I know I just looked out too. It's like oh no audio. People are like, <laughs> is there? Are they supposed to be talking? <laughs> Worst podcast ever. <laughs> I mean, I would hope you would accept. I would hope you would expect that from the Swimcast after 13 years of us doing these. Just us <laughs> miming the for a half hour. Matlin? <laughs> the last <laughs> Mimsy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, yes. Yeah, so, uh, C3K. So, let, let, me, let me go through quickly again. So, Rilo, Duck Savage, uh, Beast Man, and Vaudevillain from uh, Helper Podcast Network. Uh, we got Travis and Brandon. I don't know which one's which. From uh, Interdimensional RSS Podcast. And we got never tell. Jason from Swimcast. And Trish is eventually going to make her way in here at some point for like five seconds to say hello. Uh, and our guest, uh, I guess because he doesn't really have a adult swim podcast but uh j also jason but also chevron and and mainly chops from a show called pop culture anonymous which also airs on the acp network uh starring matt neslanik i believe and some other schlub yeah, it's that john galbo guy Ugh. oh yeah i hate that guy uh. i hate him every day every time i look in the fucking mirror i'm like i hate you <laughs> i hate you you're the worst <laughs> but you're sexy <laughs> Wait, me or you? What? No, m never mind. Okay. Well, uh, so we are all here to uh, entertain your ear holes and hopefully your eye holes, and hopefully you're mm. hearing us better than than you were before. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, everything that went on with Adult Swim Con, everything that went on with Comic Con at home, or most most of stuff as far as Adult Swim and Cartoon Network and Swim adjacent stuff and. All things in between and maybe rant and rave on certain topics that we may or may not have agreed with. Rick and Morty being the showdown winner. Um, You're just going to and save it for the end. Oh, Greg. <laughs> so. Hey, <laughs> what hey we're, we're, not, we're not arguing over here. <laughs> but we'll get into that later on. Uh, what I did want to start off with is uh, panels. Because we all we've all seen the panels. I, I lost my document. 
This is what happened. I'm scatterbrained and I lost my document about the panel stuff. So I'm going to move this over here. And then I'm going to look at panels here. So the first panel we wanted to talk about tonight was the Yellow Crystal Fantasy panel. Uh, for those who don't know, Yellow Crystal Fantasy is a new show by Michael C Cusack, uh, the guy who did Bushworld Adventures. <laughs> If you recall that uh, April Fool's joke from, was it last year or the year before? 2018. God, where does time go? Wow, really? <laughs> uh, no. So, I don't know. Uh, Yellow Crystal Fantasy aired uh, April Fool's and the episode is amazing. And I feel like Trish should be here by now, but she's just dragging her feet. So uh, she can come in and talk about it later. Uh I'm just going to go around the horn. Uh, Swimcast Jason, what did you think of the show? I think it's great. Um, I was looking, I was hoping that they would do something with um, Michael Cusack after Bush World, because that was fantastic too. And I ended up, I, I got a chance to watch you April 2nd, because I went to bed instead of watching the full April thing. But uh, it's great. It's everything I would have wanted out of something like that. Uh, it's hilarious. I can't wait for it to air. Nice. Pretty uh, much it. Did you Good. get? Do you got to watch the panel? Uh yeah. I listened through the majority of it. I uh, I dig what they're doing with the music and stuff like that. I it was I, a I fun love, part of the panel. I love the music. I also uh, was really fascinated by how they set up the the actual panel. Like the moderator yeah. was in green screen, and then everyone else was like in different scenes. Just like put them in the windows of the house or put them in the trees in one of the backgrounds and stuff like that. I thought that yeah. was really clever. Exactly. I also like the moderator's DIY Comic Con podium that he had going on. Yes, little, absolutely. Little Sharpie podium. Yes. Yeah. That that was clever. I, I probably would have done that myself if I had some time, like just put up a Comic Con podium because I'm probably never gonna moderate a panel at Comic at San Diego Comic Con. No, uh, that attitude. Here's Not with house. any attitude. Oh, perfect, <laughs> perfect timing. Uh, I should introduce to you uh, at home and our panel here, my Swimcast co-host. She is the rock that holds me together sometimes. Uh, the the muse, the the legendary Trish Henson. Uh, oh my God! Hey everybody! You're hey. you're on live on Twitch. How you doing, Trish? Uh, I just had some mediocre pod Thai, but the Thai iced tea is really good. Um, I also watched the Rick and Morty panel, and then we watched YOLO Crystal Fantasy, and oh my god. We were just in the middle of discussing YOLO Crystal Fantasy. How did you like that? I like it so much, I think they need to premiere it, like, now, instead of two weeks from now. <laughs> I, I can't live without it now. It's so good. It, it's it it's just my new aqua team. <laughs> it's new aqua team. Might be my new aqua team. Oh, I mean aqua team <laughs> is number one for me. Unlike all those like idiots who are like Rick and Morty's better. Well, Rick and oh. Morty is more real. Shots fired. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. I'm sorry, hey, but it's can, stupid. Can we can we, can we get the Morty caveat was... out early that uh, you know we're we're not offended. So just, just <laughs> well, we're not we're not offended by anything that you know. Oh, twelve ounce. I don't get twelve ounce mouse. Oh, Aquatine sucks. Oh, uh, what was the other one? Oh wait, we're we're talking we're talking about Aquatine on this. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for having us, guys. Thanks, we'll, uh... bye. Well, that that for those who don't know, uh, that's where we started was Aquatine Central, and then we tried to do a podcast and. It was like, we're talking too much about Adult Swim in general. So it's like, uh, do Adult Swim. And no one else was out there at the time. This was 2007 when we started. And, you know, just rolled and rolled and rolled on until, you know, we said we still do them from time to time. And, uh, you know, between adulting and not really watching as much Adult Swim as we used to, it's kind of like we'll do one like every couple of months or so. But why is it gotta be on so late? Oh. That's why that that's why I think for me at least I I I am appreciative of you know y'all you know hold you know transferring the mantle of 
Adult Swim podcasts into, you know, Rick and Morty podcasts, Venture Brothers podcasts. Uh, I know there's there's a couple other adult and Adult Swim after thir- after like 11, 12 years decided, hey, we're going to put a podcast on. <laughs> it's like we, we found value in podcasts thanks to John, but we're not going to give him credit. You guys heard about this new thing called I'm podcasts? I'm kidding. I, I love much love to to Matt Harrigan and the Didn't people. Didn't Rogan invent podcasting? I thought <laughs> I thought Chris Hardwick invented podcasting before he got into Conan into'd. O'Brien. Does it call well, I mean, as long as we agree that Al Gore invented the internet, like yes, he did. Of course, yes, yes, he invented it to find man bear pig. <laughs> 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 you know, one of the things that I appreciated most about the YOLO panel was the two creators kind of sitting there talking about how the idea of talking about their creation in any remotely professional sense was so wildly disconcerting. They're uh, like, right. these are jokes yeah. playing around with for years. And like the idea that people are asking them serious questions about this fantasy world that they've been playing around with since they were in high school was mind blowing to them. Right. It's like, it's like they're coming at it from like, we just like to do this for fun. And now it's, we're talking about this as like, this is our normal job. Yeah. Make money. Like adventures in Bush world changed my life. (laughs) I think it changed most people's lives. To be honest, I mean, with you. you know, I get in the wombat, oh, no. Morty. Get in you the know, car, Morty. You're gonna die today, Morty. It was the first time I had to look up what a Ute was. <laughs> oh my god! So here's the thing with me and Utes. I saw. Oh my god! Oh, it's, it's a Chevy. Ute. Oh, oh what is it? What is it called? It's a Chevy. It's like a Ford Ranchero, except El Camino. So I saw yeah. El Camino when I first moved to California, and I thought it was the ma- like just most amazing thing ever, like a car that's also a truck. And Adam's like, oh, yeah, they have utes everywhere in Australia. And I was like, we got to fucking move to Australia. <laughs> um, so when I saw Ute Uncle Barry, it was like my heart was like it became whole. It became three sizes larger than it had been. I'm Ute I just- Uncle Barry. <laughs> I love you, Uncle Barry. When you <laughs> killed me, my soul went into the family you. When I saw the title for that, Adventures in, what was it, Bush World, mm-hmm. uh, having seen YOLO Girls previously, that was not where I thought that title was going. <laughs> oh. Wait, there's, oh, it was, there's it other... Was, there's the other. original YOLO Girls sketch? Have you seen it? No. Man. Okay. Uh, just take, take a few moments and gird yourself uh, once we get done here because you are not expecting what is coming your way. Uh, and <laughs> I, I, I don't want to spoil anything, so I can't say much other than to say um, Corn makes an appearance. Holy shit, really? The band? No, no, not the band. And it's the worst <laughs> possible of corn you can think of huh oh no i'll just well, 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 like, go there first <laughs> I, I, I spent some time in korea and there was like a corn burger that i had one time was it anything like that well uh, that episode on of the harvey back side birdman. well there's that episode of harvey birdman where they genetically alter corn too much and then they get that <laughs> springy thing from the jetsons oh god <laughs> 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 I don't remember that one. I love corn. Actually, um, my 31st surprise birthday party was late because I had to eat corn. Like, I was so depressed. I was like, I'm not having a surprise party this year. Because I told my husband in January, I was like, I'm turning 30. You're going to throw me a surprise party. And he's like, how is that possible? And I'm like, I don't know. You're going to pull it off. So, um, it's it's the day after my birthday or something. And I'm like, so depressed. I'm like, God, none of my friends can do the surprise party. They're all busy. And so we went home um, and I went and showered. And then my dad made corn on the stove in in a pot, not just on the stove, but um, (laughs) 
<laughs> I just like to throw a push on top of something really hot. Like, what happens? I, honestly, I just I just keep thinking of the Aqua Teen episode. Corn. <laughs> oh, more, last more night. corn. Hot dolphin. So, like last night, um, Adam grilled corn, and you grill it in the husks, and I'm like trying to rip off these like hot ass husks of the corn. <laughs> And he's like, more corn! And I yelled, it's not different at all, is it, Steve? And, you know, <laughs> a very common catchphrase in the Henson household. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. So, so yo, going, not to go off on more of a tangent, but uh, going back to what we were talking about, the YOLO stuff, um, I'll put that back up on the screen. So, anyone else have thoughts about YOLO? Um, it was just the best thing I've ever seen. What? The thing I, I really can't get out of and my she head. She me as a lady who's seen some shit. Oh, Trish, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we've had, we've gone on adventures, uh, on our, on Swimcast a lot. Um, Mostly my fault. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the thing that got me was the, the beach song. <laughs> yeah, yeah that was good. you didn't you did you watch the panel no we oh. watched the um we watched the episode you need to watch the panel because there's a song about going to the beach mm-hmm. welcome to I the also beach love that it was a bit of a, uh, it, it was a bit of a visual trick because you see the two creators and one of them sitting there and he's kind of up against the stained glass window and the other guy's got like a whiteboard behind him. And then eventually they bounce over to a third camera. You realize they're only 10 feet apart. Yeah. 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 I love that. Like they look like they were in different, different places. And then you see like they're in yeah. the ch- and they were in a church. I was going to say they're yes, yeah. being in the church. Yeah. That's where they hung her down for the quarantine. And they weren't struck dead. <laughs> I mean, after Adventures in Bush World, I was like, is nothing sacred? Man, I'm telling you, I cannot wait for you to see the original Yellow Girls. Oh, okay, what is I, it called? Because I'm, I'm looking it up on YouTube. Just look, just look up Yellow I, I was going to say, look up Michael Cusack. Yeah. And just get the videos, uh, and you'll see parts one and two. It's on Newgrounds, too. How do you spell it? C U S A C? I guess. Okay. With the K. Uh, I don't know. I A C Joan or John. Yeah, like Michael Cusack. Okay, like a one, one of the Cusack siblings. I'm lucky I could push mm-hmm. buttons at this point because I had a shot of rum a little while ago. Did what I mention? Did, oh, did I, I mention? I asked Adam to make me a dirty martini, and now he's gone somewhere. Oh. Let me text him. He's really dirty. Anyway, any any I other any other parting thoughts on YOLO before we move on? I want to see more. It's, you it's will. It's going to be should, fun. You will. You should pick up, pick up Smiling Friends, too. Yes, I watched Smiling Friends last night, and that that is just as nuts as YOLO. Q, uh, yeah, Cusack worked on that also. He's like a co-creator. And I hope there's if, more. If, I, oh, If people haven't seen it, please check that out. It's one of my favorite po- pro- pilots they've done in a long time. I, I do. What, what is that? Smiling Friends? Smiling Friends, yeah. Is that the one with the two guys who are like kind of like Beavis and Butthead ish? No. Uh, no. They like they go in at they they go to house to house to help people. Oh, it's 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 by uh by Cusack and I forget the other guy. Oh name. my I'm god! Sorry. Da- is it Zach Hadel? The I think yes. Psychic Bubbles. Yes. Yes. I'm yeah, thinking psychic. of Damo and Darren. Yeah. That's another Cusack one, yeah. Yeah. Oh boy, that one's good too. He's like their, he's like their big, fu- he's like their new version of Tim and Eric, basically. Yeah. He's like, man, a- Adam's more- taking a walk. I don't know when I'm gonna get my. All I wonder right. how Corn? I can make one. Any, anyway, any, any other parting thoughts about Yolo before we move on? No. Nope. Okay. The- the- Okay. Hey, the, the, those 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 Bush World Adventures guys, uh, Cusack, who by the way, Matt Matt Cusack, I kept thinking Matt Chapman, but he's Homestar Runner. Uh, the, those, those those guys, those guys are fucking fantastic. And any anything that they have, and I, I watched just a little bit of the Yolo stuff. Uh, it's just that that animation and that humor uh, just it's it tick it tickles a bone. It, I won't say which one, 
but it is a bone. It, it does. Mm-hmm. It does. It really does. And like I said, it's like they're, it's like they're the new they're the new find in Adult Swim. Mm-hmm. Like okay, what, everybody, what, what Tim and we're going to make a martini. Okay, go make a martini, Trish. I'm going to move on to twelve ounce right mass, back. which I feel like, I mean, Jason and myself aside, does anyone else have any thoughts about twelve ounce mouse? One of the things that I thought was most interesting about the 12 ounce mouse panel was the stuff I never picked up about what he was trying to do with it because it, he's essentially got this image in his mind about the buildings Roman, if you will, the extended journey, the character development, which is nothing that you would expect when you look at a show like 12 ounce mouse. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. I think the thing there is there is so and I, I mentioned this before we started uh, first and foremost there's this whole interspersed plot where you know you're first watching 12 ounce mouse and the first instinct is the general consensus of uh, oh I don't get 12 ounce mouse it's it's badly drawn and it's all it's all crazy stuff and it's all over the place and I don't get it and like Trish and I know the guy who created most of the designs, Todd Redner from uh, formerly Radical Access. Now he works for uh, the Archer team, I believe. Uh, And like even he said, you know, it's not it looks simplistic, some of the the designs, but it's really more complicated than it looks. And yeah, yeah. And the other the other half of it is there is that interspersed plot because uh I believe it was uh, one of the PAs, Tom Foolery, who used to work for Swim, had mentioned once, like, this show is kind of along the lines of, like, a Twin Peaks, where it's like, you don't get it at first, but there's such an elaborate plot that, and you still, and you still try and figure out, like, the, the intricacies, I guess, I'm slurring my words at this point, but whatever. You do, Uh, you do sort of, you do sort of start to pick up that there's something happening there towards like towards the end of the first season i would say right and that's exactly what i said earlier i'm like by the second season you're like and that's i think when the corndogcentral.com people started sprouting up uh when we ran that site spoiler it is it is coming back see that's why i think it's a shame that they never made the dvd version of the series more accessible because if if you own the dvd of the original series it's entire it's all spliced into one long movie right and I think that that's like the best way to watch through Twelve Ounce Mouse because you actually get to pick up on what's going on, and you just you just ride through the whole thing. You have to change discs, but whatever. Yeah. Because like if you buy it digitally, it's cut into the episodes that it was on TV. I think if you have a chance or have the ability to watch it as the movie that was on the DVD, I think that's the best way to watch it. Right. You know what's scary about this part of the conversation is uh, Beast Lamode is a Twin Peaks devotee. And uh, now I am deeply afraid that he is going to get into 12 ounce mouse now. And that <laughs> I will start hearing of his crazy theories about how this all ties together with Tibetan Thulpas and Jack Parsons. <laughs> it, it, it very yeah, no, well you could. Can't say, you can't say trigger words like that. Like it's actually yeah. one of the, the running jokes on our, on our podcast uh, that like, I actually probably spend more time promoting twin peaks than, than venture brothers. Uh, <laughs> basically the, the premise is uh savage and vaude villain talk about venture brothers and i try really hard to get them to not <laughs> nail on the head on that one. Oh god so no you said twin peaks and i'm sitting over here like a can of soda that's been rolling around in your car for a week like yeah, i'm just thrilled you still got your shirt on <laughs> I should mention shirts are, shirts are optional tonight. So I mean, and, pa- and pants, of course, if you're not going to stand up. <laughs> um, but what I was alluding to earlier, there was there has been so much time between when season two ended slash was canceled by by Michael Lazalo, <laughs> as I call him, uh, that I think Malero had a lot to think about, and I guess when the time arose where they were like hey we can bring 12 ounce mouse back i think he had a lot more ideas than what he did because even the fact that they threw out the web show although 
spoiler alert in that last episode i'm having i'm wondering if that was heavenly that we saw i still gotta watch the new episodes personally yes yeah sorry no that's fine i don't care i'll I'll forget every spoiler i'm very forgetful spoiler alert it involved a monkey (laughs) i'm I'm kidding (laughs) But the panel, which I I, po- I just posted in the Twitch stream, uh, really good information. I mean, nothing new because, and this is this is the thing with some of the Comic Con panels, where, <laughs> like, either they're in the midst of showing their uh, shows or they don't have anything to show. Where it's it's like them just shooting the breeze and the moderator. Uh, in this case, Max Simonette, this guy in the middle, um, he pl- he voices the pineapples, but he's I guess he's a he's a Adult Storm stream guy. Jason, do you know? Or maybe no. maybe maybe someone else knows, but apparently I think he's a, he's an Adult Swim stream guy, and got involved with Twelve Ounce Mouse, but he voices the pineapples, and uh, wait, pineapples from what? From Twelve Ounce Mouse. Oh, okay. I haven't what? seen that. I, yeah. We haven't been watching Twelve Ounce Mouse. We go to bed at nine, right? So, because you're, cause you're <laughs> Meemaw now, I'm Meemaw, but not, uh, but not that Meemaw. <laughs> but no, he, not that. He, but he was the moderator, and he had all the the guests. I'm I'm pointing the mouse, assuming that people can see my mouse on the screen, <laughs> but no, they can't. Uh, but uh, yeah, he moderated the panel, and it was pretty standard panel interviews about you know what's going on in the show they showed a couple of clips that have already been in the episodes and not a whole lot of information but i i thought it was entertaining the, the one thing that i'm sorry oh i was gonna say this actually brings up something i kind of wanted to get everybody's opinions on if we've got room for it we got which plenty. was what did you think of the overall format of the panels, like essentially watching it the way that we've been watching it, being able to go back and review it and, you know, kind of take it in at your leisure, at your time. Did this work and was it able to accomplish uh, what they were hoping it would? See, the, I mean, oh, okay, you go, go first. No, go, go, go ahead. Well, mine's going to be long and boring. So I was just going to say, like, for me, going to a physical, physical convention is, I mean, obviously you can't do it right now, but like, being at a, at a physical convention and going to panels, I love doing that, but it being just sort of stre- streaming and I can go do it on demand whenever I want, it made it very easy to just never get around to watching any of it mm. because I, I forget or I'm watching something else or I, I, get, I work or there's something like, like if I'm, if there's a, I'm at an actual con, I'm off of work. So like I'm forgetting a lot of this stuff that it's even happening, mm. you know? One of the things that I thought would be most appealing about this format was that you didn't have to choose what you were going to see the same way that you would if you were live at a convention. You know, yeah, you can was, make it nice. all of them at some point. Yeah. yeah, I think I think for me, I do agree that okay, you know, they said specifically, you know, you can catch this panel at this time but it was still available online at the same time. It was kind of like, Oh, I, I don't know. It was, it, it was kind of split because there was Comic-Con at home, which was like on point and was like, okay, well it was actual Comic-Con kind of. Yeah. It was actual Comic-Con international where it was like, okay, we're going to have X panel at Y time on youtube and then adult swim was kind of like okay well we're gonna have the rick and morty panel on twitch and we're gonna have the showdown on adultswim.com and we're gonna have this on youtube and they were kind of all over the place and i did notice uh last night someone in the reddit group posted a survey monkey that came from the adult swim twitch people who were like hey did you watch our twitch which you know or did you watch a stream and what did you watch and uh, you know, did you know, our, are you familiar with our sponsors and you want to see us do more stuff on Twitch? And I'm like, personally, if you were going to do this anywhere, I mean, I get that you're, 
you have a website where you do that stuff. So either do it there or do it on Twitter. Or you know what? People do streams where it's everywhere. They they do streams where it's like streamed on uh, Twitch and YouTube and like 50 other programs at the same time. Yeah. And okay, I, I give up. Uh, Trish? Yes. Everyone in the Twitch is complaining that they can hear your drink making. I know, but I I did a really good one, and then it exploded. Please mute your mic. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to get in the in the spirit of the holiday. Okay. Because <sighs> so, uh, one of my uh, one of jobs is as a DJ, and we got two DJs in the chat box with us. Uh, shout out to Tris and Shada. And like somebody's somebody's making that drink strong. That's a double take. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to point point it out because it's just going to derail me seriously. But I have to at this point. <laughs> Which you know what, whatever. Um, People have spoken. So where was I? Please, someone, someone help me. Well, you, you're, oh, you're I think you were discussing re like multiple streams and multiple platforms for streaming and yeah. Okay, Don't yes, which, which thank you. Yeah. To... I think that's... See, I was listening. Thank you, thank See? you. I'm glad someone was. <laughs> no one listens to me. Um, but yeah, uh, just to sum it up and not ramble on anymore in a drunken rant. Uh, yeah, they should have done either done a multi-stream or said, hey. Guys, we have our own AdultSwim.com. You can watch it on, you know, a Roku app, unlike HBO Max. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're streaming it here, but we're also streaming it on Twitch, and we're streaming it on Facebook Live, and we're streaming it here and there and everywhere. And that way, people could make their own assessment of, you know, where they were going to watch it. And, and which worked best for them. Right. Yeah. And, and then yeah. they could come out with a survey and say, well, where did you watch us? And how did you, you know, how did you enjoy the panels and which panels were your favorite? And do you like the virtual concept? But I don't know. That, Actually, was, that, me. Was, that was one of the hardest parts about this for me was trying to navigate through where they had these to find the stuff I was interested in watching. Well, that that's uh, a, because he, yeah. they had like 90 different panels like there were what 92 93 videos on one of the just one of the days yes that's I mean, that, that's it was, impressive it was, every, it was every panel yeah mm. and at least can i point out i'm sorry what well i i heard you mention hbo max and it just really pisses me off that they're like switching to that format because it's like, what about the Adult Swim app and like all the other fucking like Hulu and Netflix and all that? Why does it need to go to HBO, which is just another thing I have to pay for? Well, that that's another story for maybe later because, on. Uh, or <laughs> yeah, I actually I don't know the about that too. Really. Answer, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, well, I mean, we can if we have time, we can talk about it. Otherwise, we'll have to come back. <laughs> yeah. Um. It, you guys, you guys, you guys mentioned the whole like. Uh, 90 different panels whatever on on youtube some on twitch some on on the website all all all, all over the place i mean that's that's kind of what differentiates this event from a comic-con where we know everyone's going to be in san diego we know everyone's going to be there all all in mass and we know that there's going to be a lineup of, of panels and and what happened what happens here is like what's going on when is it going on it doesn't feel like an event it feels like a sporadic uh it feels like YouTube content that people are just throwing here and there and everywhere. Like I didn't know yeah. there was a, a Bill and Ted panel today until Wait, right now. I'm like, oh, that's great. There was a Bill and Ted panel. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Oh, it's like yeah. a one, sweet... of the, one of the quick panels that I thought. To, uh, oh, quick Go shout ahead. out to one of our uh, co-hosts, Clamdis Jane. She actually just won. Uh, Keanu Reeves, like one of his prop mustaches from the film. Oh wow! What? <laughs> That's sick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she, she, it, she she sent me some pictures of it. Uh, it's pretty oh. legit. That's nice. One of my favorite panels that uh, I got to catch up on was the adult animators panel. With uh, I mean, it had damn near everybody on it. And it was kind of, you know, it had Robot Chicken and Black Dynamite and uh, Jenny Kudrowski. And uh, go ahead. 
I was just going to say, I didn't really feel that was a panel. It felt more like a featurette on a DVD. And that's pretty much what it was because it was uh, all these little questions. They'd had them, they'd ask the questions and then had them send in their answers. And then they just edited it, edited, 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 edited it together that so that it could <laughs> kind of function as a panel. But one of my favorite parts about that was what do you think? It, what do you miss about it being live and what don't you miss? And everybody had the exact same comment about what they didn't miss, which was, was it the, trying to, like, the crowds and the smell. Uh, and trying to <laughs> smell. Yeah, trying to explain shows in spandex. <laughs> oh, God. It was pretty special. play at cons. <laughs> I mean, you ever been in a football locker room? That's kind of what it's like. That's I've that only been awful. to one convention, and it was like the sweatiest, most crowded, most hellacious place I've ever been. Mm -hmm. well, I, 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 I mean, think I'm Cafe crazy. Risque on I 95. Crazy. Well, uh, to bring up uh, one of the legends in Adult Swim, Mr. John Schnepp, rest in peace. Uh, that's where he coined the mm -hmm. phrase sweaty nerds. Oh. <laughs> right. There's like I've, if you I've ever only... see a Magic the Gathering tournament at a <laughs> at a con, just don't. I don't <laughs> know. Yeah. There's got to be butt cracks. I only. So you know, I'd always like... heard the phrase the "great unwashed." It hadn't occurred to me that there would be the great overdressed unwashed. <laughs> oh, see, like like every year I go to like for the past like ten years I've gone to like three or four conventions a year. Just to like, because I go with I went with friends and stuff like that. There's only one convention that I've been going to every single year that's that doesn't have any stink at all. Home? No, I want to get. Oh. Shout out to fucking FlameCon in New York in New York City. Is that the one so, in Queens? No, well, it used to be in Brooklyn, and then they moved into the Sheraton in Times Square. Oh, it's a uh, it's an LGBT centered comic convention, and I swear the people there never stink. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. <laughs> and it's a fantastic know. con too interesting a couple few that i've gone to in portland haven't been too bad either i think it's yeah. a, a lot to do with the climate but yeah it, that could help oh anime anime next in atlantic city also hasn't been terrible but that's just because like, everybody's at hotels right there and i guess they all have more incentive to shower because they're right they gotta stay right there anyway hmm. all the but, cons yeah. i've been to in NC have been outstanding i haven't found any like stinky nc cons I'm sure they exist. It just has not been my experience. <laughs> it sounds like it's really that would bad. exist because it's sweaty there. Hmm. Oh, it's well, hot. The video, yeah. game, the video game swap meets that I've been to, that's a different story. Mm. Oh, <laughs> oh so, boy. I will say, like, this year, the, the home con has smelled amazing, like, because I was making bacon. <laughs> <laughs> so for Breeze, my... really hit. You know. My, mine smelled like Boylan's diet root beer. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, so just getting it back to the uh, HBO panel, uh, the takeaway I had, I mean, I appreciate uh, social awkwardness because I have it despite, you know, the, you know, I know that I don't have it right now or seem to, but I am like the complete opposite. But what was the deal with the laser wolf guy? <laughs> and his swamp and his swamp thing cosplay. I thought that was brilliant. That was great. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think I think if you're gonna do something, you should have put on a mask or something like like MF Doom style. No, no, Maybe he didn't know it was in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody told him. Just got photo bombed by the house plant. <laughs> <laughs> it later slapped. Oh, it later slapped. Isn't his, last name, isn't his last name like Bonsol or something? And I kept wondering why he didn't have a bone saw instead. <laughs> bone saw is ready. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I, I loved his insight. And actually, the reason I thought he might be doing it is because in some of the earlier panels, too, with like uh, uh, Seinreich and Seth Green, they were talking about how hard it was to go to the bathroom by yourself at these conventions. And I wondered if this wasn't his solution. If nobody knows what his face looks like, if they're like, "Oh, it's a house plant," that must be that's, him. That's a valid point. That's a val. That's a very valid point. So cosplay idea, right? Yeah. 
plant. Cosplay, cosplay. A house plant. Um, so house yeah. Plant. <laughs> house plant. I'm going as one of the ferns from Between Two Ferns. God is a ficus from American Pie. I'm oh, pretty sure that's a fern holly. That's it's so, a good group cosplay idea. Two yeah. ferns and a sack elephantacus. <laughs> Oh, yeah. be- just a beard guy so just uh to wrap up the osmo stuff uh the thing that i appreciated about oh, yeah. the uh the the thing i pre- appreciated about the panel was when they started showing screenshots of adobe premiere pro and i'm like that, <laughs> that video uh that i posted at the beginning of the show that was like oh i can't my mouse isn't going to show up but like figure the line for like let me see if I could stretch it out. Any? <laughs> nope, can't stretch it out. The line for like the audio and the video are like the first two lines in the middle, and then nothing else. This is like super complex. Mm-hmm. If anyone else has dabbled in Premiere Pro, oh yeah. But that was that was my ta- that was one of my takeaways. Besides, you know, all the information that they had. <laughs> it looks more like a music you know, production than a video production. My God. Yeah. Yeah. Good lord. That's what professionalism looks like. <laughs> it looks like a fucking battleship. Oh, yep. God. Right? Like the <laughs> SDF. <laughs> All right. So we'll wrap. So wrapping up the uh, 12 ounce mouse panel, it was pretty good information. And, you know, they're, they're doing their season now. So not too much new they could share with us. The Rick and, Rick and Morty panel, on the other hand. <laughs> that was really good. I skimmed it, it because they. I just noticed, like, we were keeping an eye out between uh, things where... All the other goings-ons. Yeah. So, I didn't see it. It was a good, it. like, group of people talking about the, the shit that they work on. It was nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I was puzzled as to why Justin Ryland wasn't part of it, but I guess... I was just going to say that, too, because he's I mean, such a big part of it. Yeah, I mean, he is Rick and Morty. But, mm-hmm. I mean, I oh, guess. Among, uh, yeah, uh, and, and I know he did the uh, he did the Solar Opposites panel uh, for San Diego Comic Con. So, a, but a lot I, of that was record pre recorded. So was it? I don't. I don't know. Well, was yeah, some it, of it live and we didn't know it? I or? think it's because we tried having him on the Swimcast once, and the the response I got was, "Oh, he he doesn't do interviews during the day." So maybe it was maybe it was daytime when they did the interview and he couldn't do it. He's a vampire. We could do an interview in the Only evening. I don't know why. Oh no, I'm sorry. Maybe they did it in the that I'm I'm crossing my wires because of the shot I took earlier. Um, <laughs> no, he can't, he can't do, keep blaming the shot. He can't. Yeah, I can. Watch me. It was hours ago. Watch me. It was an hour ago, dude. Wa- oh. Watch me watch that. Um, no. Uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I was getting my wires crossed and he can't do them. He can only do interviews during the day. He can't do them at night. Maybe that's, that's a family. Yeah. No, no, but he can't do the interview at night. That's a werewolf thing. Ah, <laughs> yes. Yep. Or Justin, a vampire thing. You, you've heard it here first, uh, courtesy of all the podcasts on, on the interwebs. I can't do it tonight. It's a full moon. <laughs> I can't do it tonight. I'm doing House of Cosby. I'm a werewolf. Justin <laughs> Werewolf. I can't do it tomorrow night because I've got a lot of cleanup. <laughs> Justin Roiland is a werewolf. That's what we've learned today. Yep. If nothing That's the big takeaway. Take yeah. It's canon. It's canon. Yeah. It's canon now. It's not just fanon. It's canon. <laughs> now, the. Uh... Obviously, we have two Rick and Morty experts on the feed with us, and so I'm expert. really interested. yes, the, the, ex, like, the experts. Oh. Makes us. Yes, that's that that that's us. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it, it, it it's always throwing me off. It always throws me off when when Royland decides not to show up to those things. Uh, Roy, but uh, I guess him and Chris Parnell are, are are fighting for who is less interested in in being there. <laughs> but, but, but Parnell was there, so yeah, I don't, but was he Parnell interested was like, in being? Parnell there? showed up. Yeah, so like, Royland's okay. winning. With Parnell, he just seems like he doesn't ever want to be interviewed. He has like nothing to say. 
He just seems like he'd rather be at home reading. He's he's a, he, we, we like to call him the Harrison Ford of animation. <laughs> that fits. Yeah. I mean, he was he was he seems like he was on fire during the Archer panel. So I I don't know. Maybe maybe it's it's who who he surrounds himself with. It, it could uh, C.S. Lewis. People coming up and screaming, "I'm Pickle Rick." <laughs> he's, he's sick of being called a Jerry. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh God. Or a Cyril. Yeah, I prefer him as uh, Peabody and, or, uh, from uh, Peabody and Sherman. That's mm. my first <laughs> Parnell voice. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, he was Doctor uh, Spitzman on Thirty Rock. Doctor Spaceman. Doctor Spaceman. Doctor Space. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like when they did the, the live episodes like their ads for that were great like I am Nazi doctor no I want them to know Leo Spichemin <laughs> <laughs> oh god um what was I, I had a thought and I lost it that that tends to happen I'm not gonna blame it on the room was it about Justin Roiland uh not showing yes thank you thank you um maybe it's a, like a John Krasinski thing where he can't show up to panels for his own work because that happened twice at New York Comic Con, where he was like, it was like, oh, Dreamcore LLC produced by John Krasinski. Uh, so we're we interviewing him? No, he's not here. But he'll show up for the panel. And then uh, the Jack Ryan show, I think the first year it premiered, like they had, I can go into a tangent on this, but there was like a whole clusterfuck of, of issues with Amazon's PR. <laughs> Oh shit! Is, is that why he wasn't at the the some good some good news panel this this year? Probably. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that's a Krasinski dig. Uh, yeah, you know the, the, why why Royland isn't there? You know we can we can only he's uh, a werewolf. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm saying it. It out. He's a werewolf. Watch. You know what? This is gonna get back into the into like the internet, like the people who are either the people who are listening or like somewhere like afterwards are gonna be like. Oh my god, I heard, I heard he was a werewolf. It's going to be like somebody, somebody, now. somebody needs to update Out the there. Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to be it's, it's Royland versus John Glazer for uh, the ultimate uh, battle. <laughs> <laughs> or like alternate theory like B, maybe he's like the Daniel Day-Lewis of adult animation. So when he's, he's in a thing, been... like he's in character for like 18 hours a day. My character doesn't podcast. My character doesn't do panels. <laughs> <laughs> He's Blade. He's Blade. <laughs> like when he's doing voice, like voice work for Rick and Morty. Like he's just literally like isolating himself in his house because everything is like you know just fucking Rick everything. Mm-hmm. Oh God. Doing solar uh, opposites speak- and pretending to be an alien. You know the whole time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, what did you guys think about the teaser? Oh my god! There's oh. a blade teaser. Yeah, that was really intense. The comic on at home. We were blades. Uh. <laughs> I didn't know we were blades. I didn't know we were blades. So cool. Yeah. We are all blades. Mister Nimbus. Uh, yeah. That- the- section like it was uh, when i got the chance to kind of sit down and see it it was like a revelation it just got me even more ju- I, I got so juiced for the new season and so pissed that it stopped <laughs> right i mean it was like it was literally just the tip moment and mm. my eyes and ears were desperate for more still got blue balls yeah i yeah. I, I definitely it was it was exciting to see an animatic this close to the finale of the last season. We're used to waiting two years or so for uh, any new Rick and Morty stuff. So uh, the fact that they've completely finished writing season five, except for some edits, they're already on to writing you, season six. Are you is... rubbing it in now? Yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah our, our show isn't like your show anymore. <laughs> our show doesn't come out every other year like yours does now. God, you gotta, you gotta get that, that was, seventy episode contract. That was you know that was not our fault. That was that was my thing the last couple of years. It's like okay, Venture isn't on, so that means Rick and Morty's on. So if Rick and Morty's it not on, that means alternating for a while. Venture's three years away. They're the same cartoon. That's 
That's why you can't see them at the same place at the same time. <laughs> Doc and Jackson are werewolves. Oh my god. Yeah. No, Doc's a vampire. I think you know what it is. Yes. If you know what it is. Shout out to Chad. Everyone, everyone at Adult Swim is just in a They're pack all- of werewolves. Who is who is the alpha? It's probably Justin Roiland. It, it was it was Mike it was Lazo, Steve but but Justin <laughs> Roiland wrangled him to the ground. <laughs> That's it why like, it's been like. Hi, y'all! Really I'm a I'm a werewolf. werewolf. <laughs> uh, you're not a werewolf. That's that's that not just really a good Lazo, so. uh, Well, well, the, well, my my old my old impression was, "Ha, I'm Michael Lazalo." <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> no. I don't care. He, what's he gonna do? Werewolf me to death? <laughs> he has no po- power at Adult Swim anymore. He's fine. It's fine. You have no power. <laughs> there can be only one, and it's Keith oh, Crop. Somebody said he just updated his wiki that he's now speculated to be a vampire, <laughs> <laughs> or a werewolf, or a werewolf vampire. Uh, and okay, if we want to make it sound like really official, we'll say like lycanthrope. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Like, That's vernacular, correct. By like, the way, how do you write terms? By man. the way, since we're talking, we're on the subject of Lazo and going back to the whole Bush World thing. He wanted a whole Bush World Adventures show. Oh God, no! <laughs> no, no. The sh- the short was fine. You know, go on to Yolo. I'll take Wait, it. Mm. But they wouldn't give us like the Dog Planet pitch from Rick and Morty. Yeah. They won't give us dog planet, <laughs> but they'll give us bush. World. I would watch the hell out of Lawnmower Dog. Right? Same. I want. I want. I want six seasons in a movie, minimum. <laughs> minimum. Oh, God. Don't get me started on Community. Don't even do it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so any should we wrap up Rick and Morty, and we'll move on to the next one. I, I gotta tell you, I don't feel like I've heard enough from our resident experts about what they kind of see come down the pipeline. Well, you know the the thing the thing is is once we get once we got into like the whole vampire werewolf thing, I'm like, well, who gives a shit about Rick and Morty anymore? What have I done? <laughs> let's let's talk about the universal uh, classic horror movie monster universe coming back. Like, uh, come on, I mean, come on, Tom Cruise, he fought the mummy. <laughs> now he is the mummy. Now he, so Tom Cruise is the so, mummy. So Justin Roiland is Tom is Cruise. Along. Justin Roiland is Tom Cruise. Confirmed. Hey, I'm, John, I'm John Cruise. I, I do stuff and I'm action and stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> we're on the street. We're on the street. Is there, there? There's gonna be a, an an Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein remake. It's just it's it's on a way. <laughs> I thought for a second there, I thought you were gonna say Abbott and Costello meet Justin Roiland. <laughs> Right, I uh, mean, I pay questions. money to see that. Actually, that uh, that, that works. For... Yeah. Well, quick oh, question for Rick and Morty guys. So, uh, the Mulan live action movie has actually been pushed back. How sad are you for the delay of the sauce? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Not missing it at all. We're at, get that oh. McDonald's tie-in. Here we God. go. Here we, we just, go. We just, they just jumped from meme to meme. That, <laughs> yes. like it went from se- all of a sudden it was Szechuan and then immediately Pickle Rick. Mm-hmm. I gotta say, that sauce was terrible. <laughs> it's not, I liked it's not it. Great. I never it had was it. Really good. It was I super know, good. I got like a chance to try it when they did it for a minute and, and it was like it was like ketchup and soy sauce. I, it, was, it, would be, it would be really great like on, a, on, a, on a salmon. Like, uh, like a baked salmon. Maybe. Like, like a glaze, just it's maybe it, could, it, could, it would work really great as like a teriyaki type thing. I love that you're you're trying to rationalize how the Szechuan can make. <laughs> no, no, you mean baked Alaska? Like it's all about chunky. the wine pairing. If you if you pick the right <laughs> wine, the 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 wine. Rose. Well, we've all seen Kingsman, right? Like you can have high class McDonald's. Yeah, like, come on, come on. Come on. you get high class McDonald's. I've had well, I've not had a Big Mac in Europe. To football players. Oh, God. Oh, I think that's- we have we have reached a tangent. Are, are we Szechuan sauce? Sucks. Should we? I mean, we'll, we're going to revisit Rick and Morty topics later. I'm sure. 
No doubt. No, well, <laughs> I have thoughts about the showdown. Battle. Mm. Uh oh. It was rigged. What? <laughs> I'm Hold, interested huh? in seeing how this is going to play out because I, you guys, I, some of you, I am just now meeting for the first time. There's no doubt in my mind that the bevy of opinions we are going to get out of this is going to be half the remainder of the show. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I, I've I got am a table st- set up for flipping in the back. <laughs> You're ready. You're ready. Go oh, beast. You stop. God. All right, but we will we will revisit that in in a little bit. Uh, our last panel, I guess, unless we come up with other panels. Uh, Robot Chicken did a panel. Oh yeah. Hey guys. Um, I I didn't watch the Robot Chicken panel. So... I don't think anyone did. Anyone watch the Robot Chicken panel? <laughs> I got. I, I caught most of it. You know what uh... I. <laughs> I, I'm gonna split though. It was wonderful being on with you guys and getting drunk and making martinis that were perfect. And then I dropped it in the sink. And then wow. I had to make another one. And then Twitch heard you're dropping it in the sink. And screaming, I'm sure. Um, it's been a roller coaster. It, it is. It's my life. It's my fucking life. I'm just gonna like, you know, later on. But um, it was great talking with you guys. And good break a leg for the rest of the night. Love you all Love so you, much. Love you, Trish. Bye, Trish. Bye. Bye, Trish. Bye, Trish. Support vodka. Oh. All right. So as far as Robot Chicken, so what, what did we learn from Robot Chicken? Anything? Um, They've got a big 200th episode. We knew that already. <laughs> it's going to have Sam Elliott in it. We learned that. He, he, and he's been on the show, so I, I'm failing to real. You know what? He- has Sam Elliott been on the show? I think though? he Sam was. Elliott? I think he the was Cowboy. on. I think he was on an Emmy nominated episode, if I'm not mistaken. Oh my god! Really? Years now, ago. If there's a mustache you could get, it's the Sam Elliott mustache. That's the one you oh, want. Right? Keanu Reeves is like mm-hmm. small potatoes on like the mustache tier. Jane, Jane needs to get on that Sam Elliott mm-hmm. game. Yeah. See, I didn't I have a mustache collection. <laughs> <laughs> Start a mustache collection. You heard it here She's first. Gonna... The, official, the official helper She's gonna... mustache collection. <laughs> She's uh, going to set it up like arcades. You can go in and take the ride, and she'll offer mustache rides to anybody it's, passing by. Oh, it's, it's, it'll be like it will be like a Planet Hollywood, but just mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good pitch for a Robot Chicken episode. Listen, I, I have it's nothing. Perfect. Nothing. I'm sorry. Would, would it would it be Planet Mustache or Mustache Hollywood? Which one would it would it be? Oh, uh, I, I <laughs> just call it. I think I think you would have to call it Planet Stashwood. That that win that wins this stream's showdown. So yeah, <laughs> so Robot Chicken wins. Robot no <laughs> no Planet Stashwood wins. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I guess Robot Chicken had a pan. No, I didn't I really watch oh, it yeah. uh i was surprised with how many people were kind of like robot chicken meh it's because i think i think people forget that it's still on i think it's kind of like I- it, it kind of reminds me of the uh if anyone remembers i'm an old man but uh the snl skit where they're like uh it was i think it was a robert smigel animation where it was they were showing like uh john lovitz yeah that, that's the ticket and it was him like progressing like from the eighties until like the mid nineties and then like church lady showed up. So I, I, I'm equating it to like Robot Chicken was here and they were the big show and they got Emmys and all kinds of notoriety and the kids loved them. And then Rick and Morty came along. <laughs> mm. Well yeah. Yeah, the Simpsons, right? Yeah. Mm. Just it, kind of exists. It, it keeps shab- shab- it, shambling it, along. It just it just it's it's like for a long time, I mean, Aqua Teen was like that too. For a long time, I was like, "Oh, there's still new Aqua Teen." Uh, yeah, yeah. would it be canceled? Well, I mean, like, would it be fair to assert that like Robot Chicken has kind of hit that same tier of like pop culture presence as South Park, where like they're just off doing their thing, I, and you can I, always I, I, pop I, back I, in, yeah. and like it's always going to be great. And, and to your to what you it's just, probably, it's great though, but. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go so far as it's hit that sort of South Park esque, like pedestal. Hmm. 
I don't think it's at that that level, yeah. Said about a classic. A classic is anything that people talk about but don't read. And has Aqua Teen, Hunger Force, or you know some of these other shows, Robot Chicken, hit that spot where it's a classic because everyone talks about it and respects it, but no one watches it anymore. Mm. And yeah. I, I know kids who have never seen like Robot Chicken, but talk about it. They talk about it because a Family Guy references to it. Jeez, mm. it's so, one that I would yeah. not. It's one that I would not turn off though. If I was but, surfing yeah. and it was on, like it's it's definitely one I'm not switching past. Like it's not one that I seek out anymore, though. That's mm. no, I, I I I totally catch it on uh, streams and stuff. Occasionally. Oh yeah, HBO Max. Yeah. The, the 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 thing about Robot Chicken for for me, like it, it it's it's great, and I, I loved watching it when it when it first came on. But it's one of those things where I I, I expect this to happen with us and Rick and Morty. Like seventy when when they announced 70, 70 episodes. I was like, as as podcasters, I told Travis, I'm like, oh god, oh we're gonna yeah. be on on this for for that many episodes, right? Uh, there's just there's there's a there's a, a certain threshold where you reach where you're like, I like it, I still love the show, I have good memories with it, but mm. uh, you know, I'm kind of ready to move on now. Yeah. Uh, and so and, I think that's how I feel about car, uh, uh, Robot Chicken. And that is how I felt about Aqua Teen after a while. Not so much the part where it's like, oh, it's still on, but more like, well. The show is still good. It's still funny, but if they turned around and canceled it tomorrow, I probably would be content. And that's that's exactly what happened. And then I ended up re- writing that love letter to Aqua Teen on Agents of Geek back when Adult Swim Central was well, it's still parked over there. But uh, and I know a lot of people have told me they they were really inspired by it, which I, I don't write that great. Um, <laughs> But I'm blanking on the point I was, but yeah, but yeah, I was, you know, I can, I get it. You know, Robot Chicken now is in, I feel like is in that phase, especially the fact that they've surpassed episodes, you know, now that they're doing 200 and maybe, um, I forget who mentioned it earlier, but like, uh, being Rick and Morty being contractually obligated to 70 kajillion episodes maybe it's a thing like that where robot chicken is just contractually obligated and it's like please kill us now and, and, and we right. and we just don't know it they didn't make it a public well, announcement like they did with Rick the other Morty. thing though that they could be dealing with is just a simple fact i mean as venture brother fans we know it could take a long time for something to get made when there aren't necessarily a lot of cooks in that kitchen mm-hmm. uh and then you look at robot chicken and you're like this is one of the most difficult forms of media to try and capture stop yeah. motion yeah, so you yeah. know it's it's it could be the factor in uh, adult swim in general suffers from this because of the giant gaps between seasons on most of the given shows mm-hmm. um people forget the amount of shows i haven't caught because i've tuned out of adult swim for a moment because my two or three shows all went off air or something mm-hmm. um it, i feel like almost every amount of seasons because like, I mean, with Venture Brothers, we're going into season eight on year 17 or something like that now. Mm. Like, that's a lot of gap years going on. And just with any show that makes that kind of a run that has those kind of gaps, you're going to lose people eventually. My son, um, my son Brock is 19 now. And I mean, the show is just, it's lost <laughs> attention already. I mean, it's. <laughs> so, wait, you, you had. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> Things I was really interested in kind of getting you guys' opinions on. Um, I feel like Venture Brothers in particular is one of the very few shows that consistently gets better every year. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, she isn't suggesting that it wasn't amazing and fun at the beginning, but they're just crushing it more and more every single season. And I haven't caught up to, like, a Robot Chicken episode recently. Those of you who are watching it, where would you say the level of quality is at? Because stuff like The Simpsons, my kids are getting into The Simpsons now, and the new Simpsons episodes do not slap the same way. But mm. uh, you know, like, I'm kind of looking at you know these other shows that have been on for a hot minute. Are there any that you feel are surpassing the level of quality that they'd had previously? Very South Park. Question. That's the only South one I've seen that yeah. still slaps hard. Really, really. Uh, I mean, I dropped out of South Park for a while um, mm-hmm. in my mid-teens. Uh, I feel like it's so long you have to. 
Like, I, I don't know any. It's it, it hit, it hit a slump, and I think it, I'm really glad that Archer's out of the coma. Spoiler. Um, and we're going <laughs> back to just not weird dream stuff. Cause that Man, those, I love those the weird dream lost. shit. It was so good. <laughs> those seasons, <laughs> like, so those good seasons I, I can't. I can watch these maybe once and then be done with them. See, <laughs> the best part about the whole dream stuff is what Pam's iteration is every time. I like, okay. I, I but I enjoy yeah. Pam in any iteration. So uh, um, this this. this is, this isn't strictly Adult Swim, uh, and it's and it's done now. But BoJack Horseman, I'd, I'd say, would got oh. got better and better. Oh, that God. show good. was amazing. Yeah. They were really, Every season they were that really show good, good. And, I mean, and got better. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, I, I feel bad for how that Netflix kind of did them dirty. My, my yeah. thing well, with. Oh. Oh, I was just gonna say that's a Netflix move. You can't get more than like five, six seasons out of Netflix, period, and then they kill you no matter what. Mm, like yeah. they just don't like is anything been on Netflix for ten seasons yet? They've been around long enough to have a show with ten seasons. Mm. It hasn't happened. Definitely not. They I don't mean, they don't allow it. I mean would, I'll, would, I'll, I was gonna say, would they have tried it with House of Cards if uh what's his face hadn't gone uh hadn't been the worst person ever? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean I'm I'm content with how Bojack ended personally. Yeah, I, I am. You I'm know? too. I, I, I got I got really emotional. The thing about yeah. BoJack is it made me feel stuff that uh, cartoons rarely make me feel. Like yes. a couple Futurama episodes made me feel like mm. that. You know, mm. dog episodes. God, see more you know. butts. <laughs> and uh, and 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 the, the four leaf clover episode. Those two. Oh, see, that's yeah. the one. That's the one that always gets me way more than. Than the Seymour one, personally. Yeah, Jurassic the Clover Park. one. Ugh. Jurassic Park. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> the Clover uh, one. Look, look on the Fryer. It's like a tribe called Quest. You have to say the whole thing. Seymour Buck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, do you think like a kind of a reinvention or new kind of series would work for him too? Like I think back to like the guys behind Xavier and how they could turn that into. <laughs> The, the chilling I thought it was like a dream I had. Right? <laughs> it's like a, fe- like a fever dream. Like oh, a fever yeah. dream. I was just like, this needs to stop. And then you remember and you're like, oh yeah, that was... Oh, that Xavier was kicks dream. ass. Xavier, yeah, Xavier yeah. was amazing. Yeah, was great, but I, I sometimes forget that it was like a real thing and not just something my mind came up with. I'm, I'm a big <laughs> fan of... I'm a big fan of PFR, like, in general. Mm-hmm. Like like be- before Xavier, fucking my introduction to them was Wonder Shows and and oh yeah, boy, oh, what a, and yeah, what, a what a masterpiece of a PFR has done some great stuff. I mean, Heart She Holler, Delocated, their old know. music is what, what hilarious Delocated too. Was that? Yeah. yeah, really. Well, that's the thing. It's like, so do we take Stupid Buddy and just put them towards something else? Because it what was the the robot? Oh my god, Titan, Titan, Titan Maximum, Maximum was freaking Titan amazing. Was, that was a great that show. Was a it should have continued. Let's, it, let's transition from Robot Chicken into the next thing because, I mean, I, they've got the, the skill and everything. And like we said, this is kind of old on the vine. So I, I was so annoyed at that. And I said, I think I said on either Swimcast or on Central uh, when I posted something that like i was like watch they're gonna give it one season they're gonna cancel it and sure enough it was like mm-hmm. and, and the the story was just amazing <laughs> that's right. a great show yeah we so, also I mean, maybe had that's the that trick. star wars show too that got canned when disney bought lucas oh uh, mm-hmm. i thought you were no. gonna say, say the robot chicken star wars specials because those no, those, are pretty no. Good. those are good but uh they had like a whole actual star wars thing yeah and i and i think jackson public actually worked on it too hmm. and then it got shelved i remember that whole thing and that was that sounded really interesting and then yeah it sounded it was the, gonna be like the lower decks the star trek yeah. show but <laughs> star wars it was robot chicken but star wars but not robot chicken huh. like, yeah now uh next year being 2021 how excited is uh everybody to go through and rewatch c lab Ooh, boy. <laughs> mm, I already do that at least once a year. Come on, man. <laughs> Who you take me for? It's time. Uh, it is time. Dig out the DVD sets. Tomorrow. 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 I'm helping. I'm helping. They just get to make sure they stay a year ahead. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Uh-oh. I'm helping. 
<laughs> my stanza. <laughs> my stanza. No, wrong show. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> wrong show. Well, I think... I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting the guy's name. What, uh, what was the actor? He was on Chips. What was the older actor's uh, name? Eric Eric Rada. My wife actually <laughs> helped him down at her job uh, about two months ago and said he was the nicest, sweetest guy huh. and came back in like two or three days in a row. And I was like, okay, no, now I definitely want to go back and rewatch everything because yeah. there's always just something to like finding out someone's genuinely I, I a nice person. I that's wonder if weird. that's a result of George Lopez beating it into him because George <laughs> Lopez has the thing where – he he says this. He tells a story about how he went to meet Eric Estrada, and Eric Estrada was like the biggest dick. And oh, no. George really? Lopez, oh, jo and George Lopez's God, whole I thing. Someone on one bad day, and it ruins it. Mm. And then George Lopez vow said he vowed since then, every time he sees Eric Estrada, to make his life like a living hell. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. Can you imagine having that burden, the burden of angry <laughs> well, George well, Lopez. Oh, it makes no. it makes sense that he was a dick for so long, you know. John upstaged him just constantly on chips. <laughs> I, Actually, I he, called, he, called, he called chipes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> the acronym. <laughs> mm. Chipes. That's a heck of an arch, though. Like I gotta give George Lopez George Lopez credit there. Like that is some. Yeah, serious he's gotta art. constantly be looking over his shoulder. <laughs> Dude, I imagine, like, get, George Lopez get, is rolling out of bed, like, I'm giving Eric Estrada shit today. Let's go. <laughs> Let's see what kind of dumb shit he put on Twitter today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. And, and Lowrider plays in the background. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I think... More than my moral but... standards. By, so... by the way... By the way, one thing, because we mentioned uh, Stupid Buddy and them doing other things. I just went to go see if they've been working on anything else. I just They're working with uh, Ubisoft on a Rabbids movie. Huh. Ooh. Oh, of fucking course they are. I hate, I hate the Rabbids so much. No, but <laughs> well, I mean, if it's going to be anything like the Assassin's Creed movie, you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> if, it, if, it, if it's a Mario versus Rabbids game or a movie, then I'm, then I'm in. Oh I was gonna say God. Mario Rabbids was great. I don't know. I don't as, know. As long as it's a sequel to the original Super Mario's, I'm game then. Uh, <laughs> no, they do, they've, they've got that Crossing Swords on Hulu as well. They show. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Crossing Swords. Yeah, so yeah. They're, they're, they're they, that, yeah. they also they also worked on Camp WWE, which was oh yeah a thing that that happened. That was a thing. I never that watched. Was... I never watched it. <laughs> 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 they've done they've done things and stuff that that's yeah no for sure so yeah. good, good on them They're so are we there. are we ready for like the main event of, of the night thunderdome let's do it thunderdome <laughs> we're, we're gonna talk I'm, about I'm yes. expecting these guys, like, without like wrestling belts over their heads like oh, yes yeah. <laughs> like the bushwhacker brothers like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> actual glasses <laughs> in the show. In the dirty. Um, oh so Adult Swim, they did this thing they called the Summer Showdown, which... And it was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody! I hate you. I hate you. That's our thoughts. Um, yeah, yeah, um, that's a good way to put it. Um, I was gonna vamp a little bit. I was gonna warm myself up to it a little bit and say, okay, from from my from from an old timey grandpa Adult Swim fan perspective, I was like, okay, this is cool, you know, they're they're doing kind of a a final like final floor uh, March Madness kind of brackets with all the shows that they've done in in previous years, and I'm like, well, you know, I appreciate that they're putting Saul the Mole Man and Fat Guy Stuck in Internet on on here, but I know they'll mm -hmm. never get past the first bracket because none of the millennial kids will know what fat guy and solve the moment are. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think I, 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 too, I didn't get into it until like the week of like the final four. I was, I was fascinated by the final four, especially the fact that Tim and Eric, uh, awesome show got into the final four. Mm -hmm. and then, yeah, that, was, that was bullshit. <laughs> Deserved. Well, let, let's break this. Let's break this down now. So, 
We got. I, I have the bracket too. If people need the bracket. Well, I, I, put, it's on the screen now. It's up on the Twitch. On the so Twitch it's on screen. the screen. I, I don't have the Twitch shop. Hang on. I can, I can help you out with that. Um, your screen. Should at least cover like the, whatever the, not the Sweet Sixteen, but the, the Horny Eight or whatever they call it. <laughs> I, I forget. I forget yeah, what they call it. Some dumb thing. Horny Eight. Horny Eight. <laughs> horny eight. Yep. Honestly, I need seven I friends for a group. Who's with me? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Horny Eight's gonna stick. Yep. Is that the sequel to that Tarantino movie? Yes. <laughs> First they no, were it's that, now it's that Steven horny. Sonnenberg uh, heist movie. Yeah. Oh god. Horny Eight. <laughs> I don't I don't know if you all in the Discord can see this, but yeah. oh, I, I got it. Okay. So yeah, because I previewed it and it's being a dick now. Uh, I don't know how to get rid of. It. Oh wait, I did get rid of it. Duh. Right. Um. So, let's break this down. So, by the people. Let, well, we won't. We'll skip over Rick and Morty for the obvious reasons. Um. But like, Venture Brothers was put up against. Is that Metalocalypse? Yeah, that was a really close race that I actually covered ah. um, on the Twitter for a while. It was. Really intense. It was up against Harvey Birdman first. Yeah. Right. And, and that was Harvey easy. Bird. Yeah. And so then it went against Metalocalypse. 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 Against the Shivering Truth, which the Shivering Truth is amazing. Whole, like, it's terrifying. The Shivering Truth, Very dude, good. The Shivering that gives me like, nightmares. Oh yeah. Like it is not looking away from what yeah. like you. <laughs> I, I was. I had never seen it until I came across it very recently. And I was shocked that a show with themes like that wasn't being lauded more. Right. Mm. Like, I mean, it's kind of the same thing with Wonder Shows, and right? Like, you guys remember when Wonder Shows and was up and like hardly anybody knew what it was? Yeah. Well, he's the same guy. And too. It, this is PFR. Yeah, it's, it's just amazing. They're yeah. fucking geniuses. So the, 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 I, I admittedly I haven't actually watched the show, but whenever I saw the previews, I was like, I have to watch it because it it, ha it had like a, a a disconcerting feel to it that reminded oh, me yeah. of like the Tool it, videos from the '90s, right? Like it makes sober, you horribly and, uncomfortable mm. the whole time. It's not something you want to watch while tripping. No, no, no it just it gives, I mm, mm. I have trouble watching it. I I'll, <laughs> I'm I am man enough to admit I have difficulty watching. <laughs> That show. I'm mad enough to admit I'm scared. Yes, I'm mad enough to admit that show terrifies me. I mean, so, uh, uh, it, it's not any worse than like Eraserhead. Like, you know, if you've that done, also like, terrifies me. Stuff, like, <laughs> yeah, like, this is. You can handle this. Right. Hmm. I am so, a baby. Uh, I'm a baby now. <laughs> 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 were there any matchups that you guys thought like so because the the harvey birdman venture brothers and then venture brothers into metalocalypse like which did you think were going to be the tightest matchups i mean i'm just really analyzing this as we sp as we speak i really didn't look I, at any of the shows except for the ones I, that the winners beat i um so I really heavily followed the Metalocalypse Venture Brothers battle because there's a lot of overlap of fans. Yeah, and right. so people were having to make really tough choices. And some people were like, okay, but Venture Brothers is still on the air. Metalocalypse, its run has ended. Yeah. And yeah, it was good. Like, I know people were like trying to justify it like that. And other people were like, but the music, you got all the music that Death Clock put it out. And then. Well, that's the thing that the show is over, but the the group is still on tour. Like, they yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. When Brendan Small still goes out and does Death Clock stuff. I was watching so, videos I mean, on YouTube about like their their songwriting and shit. Like, they're like, they're that's a legitimate thing, which is crazy to have come out of a cartoon. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's wild. insane. I wonder if it's one of those like they did it for tax purposes. <laughs> so, like, when I listen to uh, the commentary on Venture Brothers, one thing I'll notice is they'll make, like, an offhanded statement, and then that thing kind of happens in a weird way. And I'm not mm. even talking about, like, continuity stuff. 
like they're talking about moving ventures to New York and uh, or going on vacation in Greece. And then, like, the next episode or the next season, you get, like, Spanakopita. And then, like, a season down the line, like, you move. Spanakopita! Like, yeah. Spanakopita! Like, Come on, you can't did not you just do write that. that in for, like, a, you know, oh, I took a Greek vacation. I did an episode on Greece. Clearly, this is research. Right. Like, <laughs> oh, no, no, Jackson, Jackson, I think, openly said that. <laughs> yeah, so Brendan Small's like, how do I, like, fund the most badass metal band and get all my equipment sponsored? Well, I make fucking cartoons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I because and also uh, sidetrack. There's a good story on some podcast. Adam Reed tells about how he got Cartoon Network to pay for his trip to Europe by saying he was going to film like segments for this cartoon they used to do. He and uh, God, Matt I'm blanking on his name. Yeah, used to do that. It's like. Howdy Doody or time or something like that. I forget. Oh, I, I do vaguely remember that. Yeah, but they they got they, they got Cartoon Network to pay for a European vacation oh and then God. didn't film anything while in Europe. That's awesome. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. Although I heard a similar story for Aqua Teen. I think they they flew out to Vegas to record Dana for a Shake. Because they couldn't, because they couldn't do it over the phone. Like, like, see, like, see, I there's there's got to be some finagling going on oh, there. Oh, of course, yeah, there's plenty of finagling going on. Let's be honest. Well, like my Greek vacation research, I did landed me a third baby. Nice. <laughs> uh, what what I wanted to say about Metalocalypse is it, it's a good show, but I think he squandered whatever money they gave him to make that rock opera. He should have just made a for a last season. I don't know. Oh, God. Those, yeah. are my, those are my two cents. Which bracket did you think was easiest? I mean, mm. okay, let, let's look at this. All the brackets together. that Rick and Marty were in, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, we Rick all know who's going to win these showdowns. I know when it started, people were petitioning to try and get Perfect Hair to win out, and I guess it didn't work. That, that would, well, that was also partially because Matt Berrigan was hosting it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you don't have the creator host i mean that that's kind of difficult though because he's created like or produced he, like a bunch of these shows i mean where is i know uh, but perfect hair it, it's definitely 12 he's, baby. he's worked on 12 ounce mouse he's worked on tim and eric and tom goes to the mayor um what was that i was surprised was beef, house got beef house got beyond, beyond the first bracket <laughs> Um, what was the it. other, what was the other show he did? Uh, Assy. Where's, oh, there it is. Oh, at, they put Assy up against Brack? Yeah, that was, some of these showed up. And some of these put me up against Brack. This is bullshit, I'm at least a number four seed. I thought the Frisky Dingo Black Dynamite matchup was really good. Oh. That yeah. was intense. Uh, yeah. I'm very and pro. Aqua Team Boondocks. Bro, yeah. Aqua Teen and Boondocks, that's a that's a hard call. Like, that's a tough heart. call. Like, that's that's my good. prime adult swim years right there. Is that that peak? <laughs> yeah. Oof. See, and, and this is the other thing I was thinking of. Why didn't they like separate it into like divisions? Like you could have the classic swim stuff and then yeah. the live action it, it, stuff and the new stuff and then I don't know, the Tim and they, they weren't a lot of these were not even like Drinky Crow <laughs> against Aqua Teen. No chance. Because if no you start chance. doing divisions, then it's like college fantasy football. Like we've got the NAAC. Like but, I mean, we're, we're analyzing it like it is. Come on, don't take this, this from us. <laughs> <laughs> we're basically analyzing this like like it is college basketball. <laughs> and we're I, just get over it. it. Well, it's not like there's injured lists or anything. It's like production hiccups. <laughs> How did COVID affect this show? Oh no! Like, mm. Wait. Yeah, this this is the the, the main like, difference. It's a Eric popularity Andre contest. Against home movies yeah. seems like an odd mashup too. So th this is always something that's interesting to me, especially in the line of work that I do during the day and many evenings where looking at the value of something versus 
how popular it is and whether or not those are inherently separate things. Like take mm-hmm. pop music, for instance, right? A lot of people love to rail against pop music. And in my estimate, it is harder to write a song that my mom, my son, and I like than it is to write a song that fits a very narrow genre band or brand, mm-hmm. right? So if you're looking at the technicality of something, being able to create something that is popular is actually really hard. And it's almost got to be like a like lightning in a bottle in order for it to stick. And when we're looking at brackets like this, in terms of overall popularity, it shows that the fact that Aqua Teen Hunger Force made it all the way to the end speaks to that lightning in a bottle that it managed to capture, that it managed to go head to head and almost win against the single biggest cartoon property on the planet for the past several years. Well, I, mm-hmm. and, I, and I mean, there seems to be a resurgence of Aqua Teen, and I'm alluding to something we'll hopefully talk about later. Uh, but oh, in like yeah. recent, I mean, as the resident expert of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, uh, the, um, <laughs> you know, there Pretty is... Much. A little self-promotion. Yeah. Um, there, I don't know. There's like, a, there's like a thing where like Aqua Teen is something that like, I guess if, you, um, I think it's too late, or it's not the rum anymore. I think it's just too. I think it's lack of sleep. Uh, uh, if you are, you can't just decide I'm drunk. That decision's between me and God. I'm drunk. Do what now? Um, something about Nathan Scott Phillips. Nathan Scott Phillips. Um, no. I feel like if you ask someone to sum up one show on a, you know, if if you walked up to someone what is said, adult swim? what is adult swim? aqua teen Ven- venture you know they have their own thing you know and it's like aqua teen was the thing for like mm-hmm. they were the the rick and morty and the robot chicken for like the first five ten years i would say yeah i would say the first decade and a half even. so yeah I, i'm Until not rick and morty. <laughs> so i'm not really surprised at how far they got eric andre i don't i don't know that the people who voting weren't just the little kids because look at how far home movies got right yeah. like let, let's be real honest with this the well, people and also home movies just got uh rebroadcast on adult swim right too. They're, they're, they yeah. seem to be pairing it up with bobs i think since they've been laying into bobs more since they lost the rights to what family guy well and, have, uh, are they no not family. they're still showing family guy bobs. Is leaving, uh, oh, guys leaving, and Cleveland, uh, Cleveland was uh, the one. Cleveland and King of the Hill, yeah. I think. And then since then, they've been leaning heavily more on Bob's. So I feel like Bob, I mean, uh, a lot of home new home movie fans are coming in for Metalocalypse. They're like, "Oh, Brandon Small's other show." Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I've seen that else. too. Like, and 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 um, I think my friend who's also watching hey, it, John Benjamin John fans. Fans. We oh yeah, Bobby. I love yeah. that guy. I've talked to him a couple of times. I hear he's got a. Van. I mean, Co- Coach McGurk is one of his like most like iconic characters, and it's you know a shame most people will not know him from that. They like it's either Bob's or Arby's commercials, maybe an Archer for sandwiches. Uh, it's for sandwiches. Uh, I see. I don't know him as I I I I normally like I think of Coach McGurk, but I normally think of Jason. From home movies, because mm. that's also him. Yeah, he took over for the original guy, I think. Yeah. Cause, so he's he's also Jason, and I think like Walter and or Perry. I don't know which one. <laughs> yeah. What do you think was the most unfair bracketing? Hmm. Oh God. Like, Any? I mean. Because, hmm. I mean, it, just looking at the bracket right now. Uh, they put Rick and Morty up against Perfect Hair Forever there at the beginning. And Perfect Hair Forever did not have nearly the fan base that, uh, that Rick and Morty's got. Was Wait that, you know, like a... And, a and they, they still got like 26% of the vote, I think. Something like that. No, I, I, don't, uh, I don't understand put, how, how Beef House got past stage one. Which which one now is Beef House? Because there's two Tim Heidecker pictures, and I'm oh, like, so it's the uh, one with him with the the looking like a a gross Jersey Shore type character. The one on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. So how in the how in the blue hell does does 
Beef House beat out NTSF. I mean, maybe I'm biased. I did not it's only got one season. It only has one season out. It that and three busy Debras, I think. I I I, I think Beef House Debra's has the stronger of the two. Beef House yeah. has the advantage of being a a newer show and and also being, being Kevin Eric. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. I can understand. I'm I'm th- I'm guessing this is Frankenhole, the one next to Fat Guy. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I, I I get that one. I like um, that Lucy got past the first bracket. What is that? I Which, think... where, 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 I'll tell you what it is. It's Lucy. On the left? It's all it's the way on the bottom. Uh, it's one battling Lucy. Yeah. I can't uh, make, I can't Lucy. make out the... I think that's, that's uh, Gendy Tarakos. Oh, oh, is that uh, That is uh, my core team. My oh, well, well, oh, well yeah, it's gonna. Wow. If you put the wow. if you put the socially insensitive show up against anything, the it's yeah, gonna they're, get... they're both ones not standing by minority their minority decision <laughs> at all, hmm. and rightfully so. I don't. I yeah. Uh, what the I mean, C-Lab I, I was, made? It. What did Squid Billies go up against? What is that? It looks like Guy Fieri. Is that over? Yeah. That's over on the right. <laughs> Oh, that's that, that's that the part of the guy going to get one? mostly for millennials. That's, yeah, that's oh, oh yeah. yeah, the show oh, I'd never heard of. Your pretty face is going to hell when against Eagleheart. Mike Wait. Tyson went against the busy Debras, three busy Debras. Black Jesus went against Tim and Eric Awesome Show. C Lab twenty three to one went that's against. A little bit of a disappointment. Like I think Black Jesus is way better than Tim and our Tim and Eric Awesome Show. Mm. I wish shocked yeah. Tim and Eric made it. I wish I wish I wish there wasn't as much Tim and Eric. I feel like there's oversaturation of you Tim get, and Eric. You, yeah. get, you get you get one show track. Tim and Eric to represent yeah. you. Yeah, you I get, feel you like get multiple. Just been like Tim and Eric gets one show. That's I, it. I feel well, like we're on three quarters of the bracket. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, Tim gets the a show. Bracket. Eric gets a show. I think they should have had Tom goes to the mayor, and that was the only show they ever had. But that's a different story. Or could they have just lumped them into one thing? All Tim and Eric, Eric and then on the off chance that they win, oh. break it up and be like, "Oh, they so to be their own separate Tim and Eric bracket." Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> the Tim and Eric <laughs> Summer Showdown. Because like there's a lot of overlap. Whoever of loses, theater. Matt Harrigan wins. <laughs> um, now we're kind of here at the part where we really need to talk about the final four. Exactly. And that's why I brought the screen back up. So, okay. So let's go ahead and kind of take a quick look here as to whether or not you guys thought that the ones that made it up there were the best choices. And if you thought the matchups were decided correctly. I think the execution was poor. I think they shouldn't have done it just on Instagram stories. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the one thing that I've taken away from is that it, it was not a good format choice to get a proper vote. Yeah, it's, and I said this before we started, it's like, number one, half these shows were on before Instagram was even invented, so who's going to know enough to go vote for stuff like that? Only only teens who, like, are deep diving into Adult Swim. Right. Everybody everybody go to MySpace and vote for your favorite. (laughs) Yeah, everyone go to MySpace. MySpace Go to the live journal. We have a blogster. <laughs> <laughs> no, they should have, if they were really super serious about this, then they were, they should have just put it on swim.com. Yeah. Well, they, could, they could have, if, like we were talking about doing things on multiple platforms with, in terms of the streaming with the console. They could have done that. They could have oh, done yeah. multiple platforms because, because I mean, it, Instagram is not the only platform that has a poll option. You could have done this on Twitter also. You could have done this on Facebook and, also. Yeah. If you really want to stick to social media, you could have or, done it on or, there. Do it on SurveyMonkey. Who, you know. That, <laughs> yeah, even know. that. Who I cares? Know. Everyone uses SurveyMonkey. Universities use SurveyMonkey. I used it once. I didn't get it. <laughs> but that's me. I'm old grandpa, man. Um, but, and, and again, saying this earlier, it's like, 
okay, you're you're putting this vote out on Instagram. No one knew how to get to it. Uh, the Aqua Teen shitposting group that uh, a lot of us are on uh, was like, oh, how do you click on this? How do you click on, you know, how do you get there? Uh, Nick Gibbons from As Seen on Adult Swim posted, I think, the last possible day that you could vote uh, a link. And, and Dana Snyder was posting, you know, come on, guys, let's get this back up to, you know, pass. Because when it started, when they first had the showdown earlier in the week, it was like, I think the, it was like Aqua Teen was up to 60 and Rick and Morty was 40. And then I think a day later they totally flipped. And by then it was too late uh, to start voting because people were like, people were still saying, oh, where's the link? Where is it? And I would, I was looking back and I'm like, it's gone. Yeah, because uh, that, that's the problem with Instagram poll with uh, the stories. The format is stories only last for about 24 hours unless you save them. And I don't think they were saving them into, like, highlights and then making the polls last longer. Mm. It's a format. Yeah. So, I mean, so that's that's what we got. We got, you know, Instagram, two-day voting, and I guess most most of the millennial people knew how to do that. And we got what I just posted on the screen. Oh. It was actually pretty close. Let's yeah, see. it got Nice. I'm really close. So we wound up with Aqua Teen Hunger Force versus uh, Tim and Eric Show versus um, Robot Chicken versus Rick and Morty. Mm -hmm. And we ended up with Tim and Eric versus Aqua Teen Hunger Force, which is as throwback adult swim as you can get. Yeah. And then we wound up with Robot Chicken versus Rick and Morty. Three of the four that were on here are classic adult swim properties. There is only one newcomer. And when we're talking, you know, I heard a couple of times people say, oh, this was rigged. This is rigged. I mean, I, I'm looking at this. Three quarters of that final four are not new shows. See, right? they're That's out the of. Thing is like, OK, again, I'm going to put on my, my tinfoil hat here. Um, <laughs> oh, God. First off, Adult Swim Karen was a publicity plant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Are we going there and, now? <laughs> We can't and, do this uh, without mentioning Adult it, Swim Karen. <laughs> right, fair enough. And I mean, if you look at, you know, the, the final four and then the, the essentially like the, the ultimate, you know, supremacy there, like these are really the four that kind of wreck it, like uh, the four shows that are the most recognizable brand wise in terms of like Adult Swim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. this is Adult Swim branding pillars right here. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking, we were making jokes about how many shows Tim and Eric have. Bam, there they are. They're a pillar. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can't ignore Rick and Morty because, I mean, it's been everywhere, right? Yeah. Robot Chicken, again, they're kind of like sliding up the echelon, moving into that Simpsons, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, family Guy territory. And then, like, I mean, you know, there's Aqua Teen, and Aqua Teen is, like you said, Aqua Teen was Adult Swim for at least, like, five years. So, mm. don't tell me that this isn't rigged. <laughs> I see the dots, man. I, I see the 5G bat giving me the code. <laughs> I I just, I'm, just, that. I'm just saying it's rigged for the sheer purpose of it was put on Instagram. Yeah. See, so. that's 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 why I'm saying, that's why I'm saying it's. It's not a, a balanced vote. And then, I, I mean, Rick and Morty may be the best show. And but who, I, who I'm just say? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw this out there. Like Rick and Morty right now is. Like, I'm not saying this as a Rick and Morty podcaster. I'm uh, I'm saying this like Rick and Morty is what uh, I would say the newcomers to Adult Swim. If they're getting brought to Adult Swim, that's what's bringing them to Adult Swim. I have I have coworkers in their their 50s and 60s who are like, Hey, Brandon, uh, did you catch that that new Rick and Morty? Right? Hey, you're not. You're not gonna... Check it out. I'm Pickle Rick. Eh? <laughs> exactly. Ex ex exactly. Yeah. I've ever seen. He turns himself into a pickle. Oh, <laughs> and, um, and, and and so like as as far as like as far as that like popularity contest, it, it's it's going to get up there, right? Yeah, and like sure. uh, talking to like Instagram and 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 other platforms for polling, just from what I've seen in in the last you know handful of years, Adult Swim has not been. They haven't been the the pinnacle of social media savvy, other yeah, than well, 
I have uh, a lot you... of thoughts about that that I've <laughs> mentioned before. Oh, uh, I, I apologize. Was, Pod, wasn't there podcast, they decide to make a podcast after 12 years of media. Well, online. yeah. Yeah, what, well... I'm kidding. <laughs> we're... We're, I mean, we're right, we're right there with you. Like I'm, we completely I, I, agree. I am, I am in full seriousness. I'm glad they started a podcast, and I have I, I, given yeah. much love to Matt Harrigan over that. Well, uh, I'll leave. I'll even talk to like the the Reddit, the, the the Rick and Morty subreddit. However many people are in the subreddit for that, like, uh, it, Adult Swim doesn't utilize that to its full potential and they and they could right so we're not going to get into the the, yeah, the I, I could get, i could go knew somebody <laughs> who knew somebody who could put them in touch with someone who knew oh you know i see a guy in a wayland Dutani corporation shirt who might know a few things do you know any werewolves <laughs> Were, werewolves i know some swearwolves Were, swearwolves not werewolves. werewolves i'm about to be the least werewolves, person on this podcast because I'm going to ask the really hard, impossible question. How in the world did Aqua Teen Hunger Force get that high? Yeah, and let's go back to who they... Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Because... Uh, cause... I mean, Drinky oh. Crow, I could see them beating. Uh, Black Dynamite... Mm, mm. I, I guess. Oh, I, I see that. I can't yeah. see them oh, beating Boondocks. Boondocks, Boondocks is so oh, Boondocks popular. is the harder one. I'll, I'll be the one who says. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take the bullet. I'll be the one who says it. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's fixed. It, it, no. Yeah, see, I'm telling you, it's like, going uh, no, 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 it, it, it. It's not. It's peak. It's George it's Soros. Hashtag fake bracket. Like I deep state. I, deep state. I I think of uh, like. When they had the bomb scare, like that sort of stuff, what CNN was saying was, oh, it's a show for stoners. That's what it is. And That's I've, why I've argued this, and I was going to mention this earlier because I forget if it was Kim Manning. You know, I, I love much love to Kim Manning, much love to everyone at Swim, but I think she described it as a stoner show. I, I think I got to go back to the to this thing. Wait, hang on. The, okay, so. Glossing over that. <laughs> uh, wow. Um, Just plug it I have it never, like... ever partaken in marijuana. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who haven't. It's not really... Uh, I wouldn't classify it as a quote-unquote stoner show. I mean, but people go but to bed... People go to bed... People go... do watch. Yes. Wow. Are you saying it's like proper? of Adult Swim, it is the most mindless entertainment you can put on to go to sleep, and that's why it's so popular. No, this no, this you Twitch just make commentary this, when you're going to sleep. This, that's what you do, like a sane person. People have admitted to me uh, that they go to sleep from the Twitch stream that airs uh, normally, the 24 hour one, plugged to ACP Network. Uh, but they've admitted to me that they go to sleep to whatever random crap is being aired, and there is really random crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, okay, so maybe that's a big part of the the issue, and I, I think we've all kind of done a good job acknowledging it. That like you know, we're becoming the the elder echelon of Adult Swim fans. So back in the day, Adult Swim was definitely more of a a cult thing. Like it's almost like you had to have a secret high sign to even find people <laughs> who watched it. And then like you know, it just got more popular and popular until like you know, Rick and Morty just blew out there and now it's like well these guys don't have a great social media presence they're not doing this right i mean at the end of the day they just weren't built for it because they were the undercurrent and that's so I think rick, how they kind of see themselves still so rick and more i'm sorry adult swim is electronic dance music in the u.s and rick and morty is tiesto or skrillex <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to offend wow. the listeners, sure. Let's go. Up. <laughs> I, I think I just got an idea for our new Skrillex podcast, though. So. Oh, boy. <laughs> no. I, mean, I would have gone with, like, you know, a uh, more of like a, a, a Vici. No, that's not better. Never mind. 
um, and again, and I don't think that it's necessarily fair to be hating on any of these properties no. that managed to get that moment to catch that zeitgeist. And again, you know, like Rick and Morty in particular is awesome, right? Mm, Robot yeah. Chicken is amazing. Aqua Teen Hunger Force, I can't use those adjectives. <laughs> wow. I mean, everyone's got, I mean, hot. going back to what, what I said, just... going back to what I said about 12 ounce of mouse, it's, it's an acquired taste. It's just like Tim and Eric. It's like, uh, you know, the cult, the more underground cult shows like, uh, Su super jail or solve the moment. Oh, give me more super jail. Yeah. I would love, I, well, uh, bring it back. They're hinting at more ball masters. So yeah, yeah ball masters. Okay. I really love ball masters. Okay. It really died okay. in this bracket, though. Holy shit! Yeah, I know really. it died. Early. Who did? Who beat it? I um, don't even know what that is. Is that Xavier? That's Xavier. That is yeah. Xavier. Had, Xavier had just also had uh, the commencement speech, too, like uh, a oh week yeah. before the bracket. I. Uh, hey, hey, guys! I, I, I have a real quick question. You guys are the elder statesmen of 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 Adult Swim, I would say, especially in the, this stream. Oh, I mean, I've watched those. Harumph, harumph, harumph. 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 Uh, but uh, I didn't get a. Were there any? Harumph. 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 Were there any harumph. notable harumph. omissions uh, from the bracket entirely that that uh, that you would have liked to have seen on there? I don't see. Oh, Cowboy Bebop. Oh, I don't know yeah. that they. I don't know that they included anime on this. Where's all the anime? I think it's just no. originals. That, that yeah, tsunami lineup. Yeah, yeah. To, like like Harvey Birdman. Harvey Birdman. Harvey Birdman on there? Oh, yeah, yeah, Harvey's on I mean, there. we got we got all of the originals: Aqua Teen, Space Ghost, Brack. They have uh, Minority. Minority. But not, but not Titan Maximum. Yeah, Titan was mm, on there. Yeah, that's, that's the one. that's like the only one I could think of. I mean, Stroker and Hoop got in. Assy McGee yeah, got in. Stroker and Hoop is located. It... Laser Wolf, Hot Streets, Moral Oral, Time Goes oh. to the Mayor, Loiter, Loiter Squad. So wow, before, I haven't thought about that. Is Primal on there? Joe is it on there? Yeah, Primal's the. I think is Primal no. the one we said beat uh, got beat by Lucy. I think that's uh, Primal. Don't no. No. Also, Neon that. Neon Joe. I think Neon Joe's on there. I think it's on towards the top. Neon Neon I Joe's top. On there, yeah, yeah. Neon Joe got beat by Moral Oral. Oh, I see him. Yep, Primal's Probably. amazing, but it hasn't been on long enough for I think people to really same as B House and yeah. Busy Debras. So, uh, you know what I isn't really on there? Family Guy Debras, okay, Family Guy <laughs> is on there, yeah, but that's not Family original. Guy. Where the that's fuck is Cook? Cook. Uh, like, of all of the properties, right? Because I know they're about to lose Family Guy from here, too. And the okay. thing about that, there would be no fan. Yeah, it was one of the things that they just announced. Uh, that that uh, it, of all the properties that are on here, there is one that owes its success more. Uh, like it, just Family Guy owes everything in the world to Adult Swim, because it you guys remember, right. sure, yeah, Adult be Swim that launched the DVD sales, and it was mm -hmm. the DVD sales pushed it over the edge, yep. and brought it back. Yep. It, it yeah. would still be... Uh, it wouldn't yeah. fit on this bracket, though, because this bracket is specifically no. the original stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah you know I, was I mean, gonna... like, one of the one of the more, like, low-key shows that I'm not sure anybody else remembers is Look Around You. Oh, yeah. 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 But again, but not, not an original. original. I, I was about to say Mission Hill, but that wasn't original either. Yeah. yeah. That wasn't? Yeah. The no, no, that, that was... was uh, Mission Hill. Oh, 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 from UPN mm. and WB. Yeah, yeah, they they took a lot of the early 2000 canceled stuff, except Dilbert, for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, oh man, show. the Gilbert Bill like was it the Scott Adams Bill Sankiewicz beef on Twitter was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like Bill Sankiewicz totally like challenged oh, him to a God. like a a doodle off or whatever, and that Scott Adams just like. Uh, I don't live here anymore. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> the one I just thought of. Children's Hospital was not in history. What? Oh, was oh, yeah. that omitted because it it started off as a, because it started off as a WB web show. So what? I'm wondering if that's why. Probably. 
Because uh, yeah, Children's Hospital was good. Uh, wait, what uh, about news? What about newsreaders? Oh no, that wasn't on there either. Uh, Frankenhole wasn't on there. No, Frankenhole's yeah, on there. We just we said uh, fat yeah, okay. guy, beat fat guy. Million Dollar Extreme World Peace. Oh, they're never gonna put that on there. Though. <laughs> For the record, fuck million dollar extreme world. Yeah, hundred percent. Fuck, fuck MDE. Whoa. Your whole on there was it? No, no. no I think that was chat that was a, a short thing. That was during infomercial is, time, right? What is the one? Is that uh, to, not totally for teens? What is the one with uh, oh, under for millennials? For millennials. Mostly for millennials. Oh, I thought that's what we said the other one was. What, was... what about Hot Package? Maybe one of those is Hot there. Package. Yeah, one of those is Hot Package. That's, what, that's what I was thinking of. And someone just, point... Kuri. Someone just pointed out Joe Para beat Delocated. I don't even see Delocated or Joe Para. Over on the left. Oh, yeah. Joe Para beat Delocated, rightfully so. He is a treasure. <laughs> Uh, was he the guy that got his start on uh, Cracked.com? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, then... I don't know. He's the one who, who does the really calm... Oh. What the Heart She Holler. Yeah, the Heart She Holler. Heart She Holler. Heart She's on here. It, they, it, it, be, it actually be China, Illinois, which I'm surprised no, at. No, I think that's oh, the wow. other one. Oh, that's, uh, uh, yeah, blah, 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 that's off the air that beat China, 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 Illinois. Illinois. Huh. Off the air beat China. Yeah, off the air beat yeah. China. But but the, but the heart right. hollers is, uh, is on there. Yeah. Yeah. Venture versus uh, tender touches. I don't was know. Scolio Piplio wasn't on the uh was it Narhal and Scolio Piplio? Was that on there? Yeah, it is. We just said it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I the heart she hollers are Nolan Sclopio Pipio. Pipio, yeah, sure. Scopio Um so I feel like we should summarize it since we're coming into the third hour of the show <laughs> that's a wrap uh, this um, is where we live this I is mean, our comfort i'm not <laughs> I, I will say i'm not upset that aqua Teen got beat by rick and morty i mean someone got You're just a, disappointed i'm just disappointed with that. with the way you know if, if robot chicken had got it i probably would have been pissed yeah yeah really yeah yeah. Uh, as as a as as you know, as as you know, Rick and Morty uh, expert. expert. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll give as, as the just as the Aqua Teen expert. I will give you the the title of Rick and Morty. Expert. Well, well, no, I I I'm actually I'm I'm going out here to say I honestly I think I think Aqua Teen should have won. Uh, just just in the sense of like I, iconicness, right? Yeah. Like Aqua Teen is Adult Swim. Uh, that is what you think of, uh, e even even when when R Rick and Morty aside. If you see uh, if you see Aqua Teen, anything related to it, you're like, ah, yeah, Adult Adult Swim. Although, and uh, it has that longevity. It, it does, but on on the flip side, I if if you had asked me, and someone has asked me this before, if you could bring back one show from Adult Swim, what would it be? And I I totally Frisky Dingo. Yes, I would bring that back because I need to know what happens with Sander Cruz, and we all him go. What, yeah, what happens? With Barnaby, Sander Cruz? Joe. Barnaby Joe. Barnaby <laughs> Joe. <laughs> People, let me tell you about my new best friend. New best friend. Barnaby <laughs> Joe. Nap. We can never. <laughs> we can never we go never back to Arizona. Arizona. <laughs> oh, I love for. Don't you, Simon? Simon, don't you do Simon? it? Simon. <laughs> And don't you do that because that's our last bowl. <laughs> Who's for we Den can never come back better, Who's so for that. Denny's? Grand Slam. So, so let's let, let's take this back just a little bit and ask what should have won. If we could just get everybody to say what they thought should well, have won. Just to finish my, my point before it gets lost, uh, I was going to say Space Ghost because that's the grand oh. But I knew I knew it wouldn't I knew it wouldn't win. Yeah, I knew it wouldn't. It, it was going to be a long shot. My... I mean, the fact that it got so far. I mean, okay, Tom, maybe moral oral, but definitely wasn't going to get past Rick and Morty. This this is going to be my this is going to be a question. I I didn't ask it earlier, but I'll ask it now, <laughs> just in general. Like if 
if Space Ghost was in a different bracket entirely, a different division, uh, do you think it would have gone further uh, instead of going up straight against Rick and Morty, basically? Yeah. You know, fairly yeah, absolutely. I think, Definitely. I think, I think it, yeah, I, I think it, I think that's why Tim and Eric Awesome Show got as far as it did. Yeah. Although, no, Squid because of they, its competition, but it beats Squidbillies, which surprised me. Yeah. And uh, your you know? pretty face. <laughs> which i mean that's uh, an <laughs> emmy nominated show for adult swim so mm-hmm. and i like that c lab got <laughs> really far too right yeah c lab did c lab earned it i think they could have done C-Lab better did its work well, man c lab went mean, up against lucy the daughter of a devil which probably none of the newer fans and remember decker. and no uh and decker but it started with the king star king which you know that was oh yeah yeah so, so thank you for answering that question. Yeah, because because you know, as as much as I lo- love Rick and Morty, I love all I love a lot of these shows. Uh, Space Ghost Goes to Coast is is always the is always the one. I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> grown down Highway 40 in my big old pickup truck. Uh, <laughs> we moisten uh, doc, your doc, dreams with man urine. Doc, doc, <laughs> doc Savage. Uh, that's that's. Your... Hey, uh, you asked you asked, you asked the question originally. Like, who do you think should have won? Um, if I'm being honest, I think the correct show won. I think that the reason Rick and Morty burn the witch was the, I, I think the, the damn so, woods like, right a duck. Um, so the reason <laughs> I think that Rick and Morty was the correct choice for this was that if there is any property that is leading Adult Swim into the near term, it is very clearly Rick and Morty. And as much as I love Space Ghost, Sea Lab 2021, and I have such a love for the Venture Brothers, the Venture Brothers is a better show than Rick and Morty is, in my in my opinion. Mm. Rick and Morty, uh-huh. however, is crushing it it's- in a way that it impossible to ignore and yeah. silly to sideline. I feel like yeah. I, I either said this or I was thinking it where I'm like, if this was five to eight years ago, it would have gone to robot chicken. Oh yeah. yeah. No, totally. And, and if That's it was, fair. you know, 15, 20 years ago, it would have gone to Aqua Teen. Yeah. Or Space yeah. Ghost. Do you think, well, I was going to say, do you think Aqua Teen would beat Space Ghost? There was definitely. Oh, God, a I think it. I think sure. it depends on on where they have their vote. I mean, if they had it in a hot topic, then it would go to <laughs> Aquatine. Okay, okay. I I didn't want to say it, but how much do you think the uh, the the potential destruction of Adult Swim just the the slowly gradually when it gets kind of chipped away? How much can we attribute that to Hot Topic and just the over popularization <laughs> of all of the different things? Because like if I back in the day if I saw Aquatine Hunger Force shirt, I'm like. That person dug around for it, but if I see somebody wearing a Rick and Morty shirt, I'm like, "You just went to a hot topic." Like to it just but, yes, it that's, to but that's but that's Walmart. now. But that's you now. Buy one at Walmart. It was also 25 years ago. Do you guys remember when South Park hit? I mean, I don't know. Those of us who were old enough to remember, and everybody had those white T-shirts with the characters on them. They were the only two shirts you could buy for them. But I'm not gonna blame Hot Topic. Be- and I again, would. this is this is the danger of this type of thing, which is someone likes something, but you feel like they don't like it enough. Like that, uh, that's, that's that's a small tent tent tent. thing. And we should yeah. be uh, we should be all in on the big tent because the more people come to this, the, the more amazing shows we get, and the more opportunities these independent creators will have to craft their masterpiece. You're saying we should yeah. go to a tent sponsored by Hot Topic. <laughs> Actually, I prefer, I prefer a, a Steve yurt. Attend, click, come to the conspiracy cork board. It's all been rigged, man. <laughs> yeah, and besides, it's not just Hot Topic. It's also Spencer's, you know? Yes. Like, let's not, let's not, let's not shoot down. Let's not, let's not it's all the blame on Hot Topic. In the, in the, early, <laughs> 2000s, in the, in the early 2000s, in the early 2000s, it was... It was Aqua Teen and, and C Lab and all of them. I remember I'd it go was, to Spencer's and see, was. oh, Aqua Teen Carl Carl's underwear. I think they had at one point. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if Hot Topic is really beating the uh, Rick and Morty drum, then Spencer's is going fucking Neil Pert on that show. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh no, you could buy anything in Pickle Rick right now. 
I, I, I have, have I have a Christmas a tree ornament. I have a Christmas tree ornament. I mean, you'll, well, you'll find Rick thing, and Morty shit anywhere. Go to the, back the, the reason store, I like Pickle Rick, Rick is that whole. I, I oh, can go and get on, a bro. Funko Pop at Walmart. I can go and get a they, Funko Pop of Morty at Walmart, and it's a good one. We we said that at on uh, the first. I think when the the last season of Rick and Morty uh, started, the season four, um, we were talking about it on Swimcast, where I'm like, yeah, they just have every character that showed up in that first episode was a pop figure. Like, yeah. like, 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 uh, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I, I, I hate to interrupt. I'm just gonna go to the supermarket real fast and pick up a can of Pringles with Pickle Rick on it. <laughs> oh, don't worry, don't worry. I already have like, I have like uh-huh. five. Do you want one of mine? You know what? I don't see, uh, Pring- Pringles is not gonna sponsor us. So. <laughs> Get that Pickle Rick boiling soda. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Morty, I'm, I'm turning myself into a root beer. Pickle juice. <laughs> I'm Rupert Rick! <laughs> you oh, say this, God. but I can imagine that commercial. Oh, yeah. After oh, no, that Pringles it's... commercial, I can imagine that commercial. I'm, I mean, you stack flavors, make new ones. Yeah. Hey, man, anything hey. is possible to throw enough money at. I, I it, was said... really, it was really weird to sit in the Dave & Buster's and watch the Super Bowl and then see Rick, Rick and Morty on every screen in a Dave & Buster's. I, I wow. said it then, and I'll say it now. They're, they're getting that big, that big AT&T money. Ugh. Ugh. Well, and again, name any other type of uh, cartoon property that has inspired something as absurd as the Szechuan sauce. It like debacle. Mm. Up at Bay. I witnessed that in person <laughs> in a line at a McDonald's. I witnessed a man lose his sanity dressed up in a blue, like. Full body suit with a face drawn on it as Mr. Me Seeks and just completely lose touch with reality. I thought, I, I, thought you you, that I thought you were going to say you <laughs> saw that one guy on the video jumping on the counter. No, right. what you did. No, was, no, I saw person. I saw something worse in person. It was a no, guy. No, you're blaming the Meeseeks. You're not blaming the person who sent the Meeseeks to get the damn <laughs> <Yeah>. sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it's not his fault. He was summoned to do this. I've been alive for hours, old man. <laughs> but, it's not like it's not. Yeah, and it was, and it was, it was a, a regular brand Meeseeks, not the uh, city Kirkland brand. Oh, it was brand. the Kirkland brand. <laughs> Kirkland, 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 Kirkland. I need some what do you want? Sauce. Also, I want to point out what Reed Cooper is putting in the chat. There's apparently a pickle Rick dildo, and it's called the Dickle Rick. I <laughs> actually knew about too it. Too easy. There's no hate, craft there. And I hate the it's fact that it exists. It's up there with the Shrek one. I it's hate that on the both of those exist. There is no other cartoon <laughs> property that simultaneously inspires chips, fast food frenzies, and dildos. This is Shrek. a special. Hey, uh, t- Shrek. T- t- to your to Shrek. your point, we're not we're not just we're not just talking about McDonald's. We're not just talking about uh, chips. We're not talking like you can go literally anywhere. Best Buy last year, I I saw some Skull Candy Rick and Morty earbuds. It just it just it just everywhere. And and you're and you're right. Like I, I think they're just there's just a huge. Uh, capitalist market to capitalize on it, Rick and Morty merchandise, and it's and, almost you know, oversaturation. And, and on the I'm flip looking, side, the big question here is: Does Susan Sarandon actually own a Dickle Rick? <laughs> I hate this. I hate that. I I <laughs> sincerely hope gift. there's a okay. there's there's a gift. I was, there's but, a Susan what, Sarandon what, what, sex doll. Trying to steer this back care. into a sane uh, conversation, I was going to say on the flip side, you got Venture yeah. Brothers who have, I think they... You have the Mego dolls <laughs> and the Shirt Club. Well, the Shirt Club is epic. I- I'm just saying, I- I'm pretty really sure... Good. Bob they... and Jackson put love into Shirt Club. It's and they've, old goddamn wardrobe. they've been adamant about they won't, you know, put their name on everything that Rick and Morty does. Which which is good for them. I yes. mean, I mean, I, but honestly, I would kill for like, like, could we just like get, I don't know, could we get a vinyl pressing of jacket? Could you give us that? That, would be, oh, that. that would be epic. Could you give us jacket be. on vinyl? 
or like a, a solid 15 minute like just snippet from the rusty musical yes well doc's already come out and said that that's what we heard is what's written of that and there's not going to be any more well i mean hamilton blew up <laughs> oh, oh no oh no now, now rusty to hamilton now you're speaking travis's language don't, don't get me started <laughs> You know what I would, I would compare? Uh, it, uh, you, obviously, the Bart Simpson behind you makes this connection really easy. Uh, the last time I remember, yeah, the last time I remember a cartoon hitting in quite the same way, it was Bart Mania, right? Because you had the music video, you had yep. the Simpsons sing the blues, they were all over commercials. Like, this has absolutely happened before. And yep. the Simpsons, like, if you had to list the single most important cartoon property of the 80s and the 90s, it would have to be The Simpsons. They were an era-defining concept that was so good. The Family Guy has ripped off of them. Almost every other family cartoon, yeah, stole big chunks of yeah. what they were doing right because it spoke so clearly to the zeitgeist. I, I think I think it's 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 interesting because you earlier mentioned that your your kids are getting into The Simpsons. My eight year old's getting into The Simpsons because on Disney Plus they have the original aspect ratio. So so we're, we're going through from season one to on, and we're in season six now, right? And so now he's getting into it. Uh, in in that's I mean that's a, a that that's how it is with Rick and Morty now. Like my my son is now like oh look Bart and getting all these these references and now seeing rick and morty and what i yeah i'm a bad parent i'm sorry you know i let him watch that shit uh damn it karen <laughs> my kid loves super jail uh, <laughs> but but being but seeing that oh, that stuff true. and be like this is this is this is what's popular in you know i i can co completely agree with your point about the the simpsons and obviously i love rick and morty i i, I keep saying that as it's as if it's like a caveat like no nah, i should be ashamed of this I'm not ashamed of it. Like Rick and Morty is awesome. And it's the people who yeah. create it are extremely talented. And the people who work on it are overworked and, and, and make incredible stuff. Uh, so, it, you know, they deserve that recognition that the people who create the show and work on the show, uh, not just the, the voice actors, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, what well, was it? Did you guys uh... Deadpool, the opening of Deadpool? And it's like, you know, kind of the fake opening directed by some asshole written by the real heroes here. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, yeah, yeah. with Venture Brothers, we don't have that problem because the voice cast, by and large, is most, like, are the writers. So yeah, it's like, it's they're, they're getting all the credit right people away. People making a cartoon. Like, I think that's how they described it. At least when it, they had the after base, it was... And you, you mentioned... You mentioned venture brothers and and you know the the people working on it are, are the writers you know uh talking about the rick and morty panel earlier and roiland not being there roiland's not a main writer roiland is the main yeah. writer see i didn't know that until regis posted that in twitch uh that he quit as showrunner i guess yeah yeah well, like that's well, interesting well yeah. i didn't know that still it doesn't necessarily it doesn't mean he can't you know the star of the show not being on your big sure. comic-con panel but i guess you know, yeah i guess well, I, especially still, when I'm... everyone else was a voice actor except for dan like they didn't have any of the other production crew on the panel at all so that that's yeah, interesting it... too yeah where was ryan ridley oh R R ridley, ridley uh, he's, was he's out Hayes. yeah oh season see, three, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not I've got to watch season four. John, big fan. Big fan, John. <laughs> oh, I, you I like Dan it. Harmon's, Dan Harmon's rubbing people the wrong way at a TV show production? That just doesn't sound like him at all. <laughs> it's a shocker. <laughs> First time it's ever happened. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Just, I, I, you, you said it's it earlier. Me. He just needs to shut up sometimes. I mean, so he just needs to call his buddy yeah. Chevy. Yeah, he needs to call his buddy Chevy and talk it out, and you know, figure it out and everything. Uh, here's my uh, here's my Emmy. W was the whole <laughs> shtick on that vi on that panel video? I'm like, oh, okay, that was. Oh my god! Long, yeah. long, yeah. long, long yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like I, I, that's like me can you know continually going back to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's all this. Yeah, you're totally not proud of that long. or anything. No. Or, I, 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 mean, I haven't been wanting to bring it up, and I'm like, you know what? That's how people are going to remember me now when when this yep. Adult Swim Central thing comes back. 
We're just going to put that on your tombstone. Okay. I, I mean, I'm, I'm being cremated, so that's fine. Yeah, we'll put well, it that on your, and the, on your the label from like a Boylan's root beer. So, like, <laughs> my, my, cre- my cremation sponsored by Boylan's. Yeah. <laughs> put you in a root beer bottle. It's a, a cream soda Asian. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> God. Too soon. Hmm. Too soon. <laughs> too, really too soon. Um, You're actually early. <laughs> yeah, it was lamer than FDR's legs. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> so I guess we're done with the with talking about the showdown. That'll do. <laughs> Um, That'll do. Any other panels that anyone saw that we didn't talk about? Or... I mean, we're, we're, we really we're, I talk about we're... panels I wanted to see but didn't see. I wanted a Venture Brothers panel so bad I could taste it. Duh. <laughs> but they're in there. Yeah. And all we have to go on is sort of vague comments on Facebook and stuff. Well, I mean, that's on where production is. This is this so that's is... all we know. This is the thing. If If and I hate to keep throwing it back to me but i know from experience that they're not really going to show they're not going to talk about and and they've said this at new york comic-con panels where they're like we're not really the guys who are going to answer seriously the questions like uh will will we will we see kim come back will you know are you going to do this (laughs) are you going to do that uh and I realized that the first time I interviewed them, and by the second time, I just went crazy. Like, I was throwing everything against the wall. I was like, so, Doc, you know, you had that, that Twitter where you just uh, logged your bowel movements, and, and, and that Halloween Whopper just came out. <laughs> so, like, st- <laughs> so, like that, was, that was my whole thing was because they're not – they're in the middle of making this show, and they're not going to divulge, you know. Oh, God. Yeah. as much as they can. And I, t- I told that to someone who was doing a, a sit down interview with them one year. I'm like, she was showing me her questions. I'm like, they're not going to answer that. They're not going to answer that. Look, look <laughs> just ask them random questions that has have nothing to do with the show. Uh, and you'll be fine. And I think, I don't know. Well, and that, that, that's one of the things I appreciate most about their participation in events like this their takes on things are so much fun to engage in. Like, and, uh, I don't know, yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily uh, the thing about the show that I love the most, but their perspective on the world is engaging. And it's one of those things where, you know, talk about the fucking Whopper. Like that's, you yeah. know, that's it. You're and it's going to be interesting because I've already bought in to your perspective. Right, and that's when I think it was the last interview I did with them on the red carpet. Uh, I knew I know that Doc's a big Doctor Strange fan, so and Doctor Strange I think was coming out a month later. So I'm like, tell me what you think about Doctor Strange, and he just went off, and mm-hmm. it, it was probably the most amazing three and a half to four minutes of my life. Yeah, I, I I've, seen, I've seen that interview. It was. Okay. I, I know was, people uh, have commented on it and said, "Oh, John, you're so awkward." And I don't know how how he's well, talking. It's to it's, it's 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 hilarious because he just oh, John, he goes that's off my shtick. Yeah, I I mean, I and I think one of the things we lost with it being all virtual this year is uh, some of the crazy shit that happens. Like I think of like, and I was talking about this. I think with. Uh, the helper crew, or maybe it was someone else. I don't know. Uh, about the year that uh, the moral oral guys they went completely bananas, bonkers at the Adult Swim panel. Like they went off. Wait, it was a you, point. You're talking about the 2006 one? Yeah, you. I I was there live. You that were was, there in person. I was there in person. That was. Uh, it was an experience. It was really, it, it was, there's a lot of stories from that, starting with uh, Dino had his intern smuggle in a giant bottle of vodka. <laughs> that and, See, that explains so much all yeah. of a sudden. Just yep. like, it's all yep. It would almost be better if that story started, I was stone cold fucking sober and I had an axe to grind. 
<laughs> yeah, and that axe was was that these Venture Brothers people are too pretty. And fuck all of you. Like yeah. that was that was the axe that and, and, he had to grind. And Jackson had the the dyed hair at the time too. So <laughs> No, that that was that was an amazing panel of, of people. And I don't That was the year after certain... Metalocalypse was coming out, right? Yes. That was the year Metalocalypse came out. I think uh they Robot they were there for like Robot Chicken was coming into season two because I remember uh, that told the story a million times. I'm not really going to go into it, but Seth Green was kind of a douche, uh, and it turned us sour to Robot Chicken, and that's that's my axe to grind with that. Uh, but uh, glossing over that, uh, yeah, Venture Brothers was in season two. Venture Brothers about... was in season two. I'm trying to think what else they actively. Had. And uh, Minority Team, I think, was about to come out. <laughs> oh, the black sheep of the adult film fandom. Frisky Dingo came out in 06. They were still... But they weren't on that... Was Adam Reed and Matt Thompson, were they on that panel? I'm trying to remember from knowledge on the panel. I know Della Pena was on... Uh, there were two tables. There was... There were... There, there was, was the, two there panels. was the crazy yeah. go nuts one with Dino and the Moral Oral guys and Venture and Assy McGee was out that year too. And that didn't it, have and, that didn't have a panel. Okay. And then there was <laughs> it didn't, it didn't have a panel. Oh yeah, and then was Tim and Eric they were on were they on the De La Pena panel or they were on They were on the De La Pena because they're not because I've yeah. I've I have moral oral on DVD, and, and that's that's the featurette. Yep, I think, and that's the featurette. Is this co- is this, and then commentary from from Dino, Tino. and then commentary from Jackson and Doc mm. about this awful bananas crazy panel, and that's what we miss out on when it's all virtual. Mm-hmm. True, but I mean, Dino could have just drank some vodka. If Dino could have. Dino could have just dropped in on one of these, any of them. Yeah. Just randomly show up at, at like they're doing a Zoom and just like, boop. Oh, hey guys, I just there show. It is. That Talk would that would be, that would have been awesome. Grabs all of the mics. <laughs> just... I, I I kid you not. We interviewed him. I think it was over two hours. Not not that he didn't leave, but we were just generous with time. And didn't really know that we should do shorter interviews. And like now we'll do like, like if we do interviews, because we don't really do them anymore because, you know, PR hates us or something. Uh, they, uh, we would say, oh, you know, if they want to do like 15 minutes, if they want to do 30, or, you know, if you want to do more, you know, which we're more uh, conservative towards their time. Versus years ago when it was like, eh, leave whenever you want. And at one point, Dino actually gets up to pee. That is that is the highlight of the episode. I should release it at some point. But it's it's <laughs> over it's over <laughs> two hours. That's that's the highlight. I don't even remember. That's the highlight. Well, that's, up to pee. that's what I remember. Wait, did he go to the bathroom or did he just unzip and go to the bathroom? Yeah. That, that, <laughs> I, that I don't know. Trish probably remembers more than I do, and she's gone now. But that, that was one like guy, a, one. that was like <laughs> like my only memory from like ten years ago was that yeah. was that part. And like I don't even remember what we talked about for two hours. I I think we talked about death, and I know we talked about Frankenhole because Frankenhole was just coming out. I'm calling you a liar, sir. You said you'd never smoked weed. <laughs> <laughs> I I never smoked weed. I never said I didn't do anything else. Like I could have done ayahuasca. Oh, I could have done ayahuasca. I, I could. Have, I, I could change. just. I could just have a bad memory from uh, repressed memories. Just snorted, just snorted, snorted nutmeg. Just, like re- repressed it all into. I read about uh, Exos autobiography, and now I've got nutmeg fever. I'm a <laughs> werewolf. <laughs> you work and, and you're now you're qualified to work at Adult Swim. Hey, <laughs> lichens only need apply. <laughs> I mean, I've got enough body hair; like, I can send a sample. <laughs> I, I have hair somewhere. 
Uh-oh. It's more I, of a skin I got, I, got, I got one hair. TMI. Um, so where were we with this? I, I think it, we had uh, pretty much run run the gamut on the showdown. We kind of talked about some of the things. Was there anything we, – we talked about the panels that we might have wanted to see that weren't there. Was there anything else that you guys wanted to kind of discuss? Well, uh, so I, I the the last thing I, I want to say uh, I've got I've got to head out here in, in a second, but the all the, the panel hasn't started yet. Uh, but what I'm interested to see is we didn't really talk about tsunami because that panel has not really started yet. Uh, is the the Blade Runner uh, black mm. row black oh, something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is set between yeah. Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2029. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm looking forward to that, and uh, if you know if I can find some sometime in the next day or so yeah. i really want to check that out i know i was just looking at the the discord for the reddit group and they said a lot of it's probably just going to be on youtube later on it sounds like they're not gonna have anything because i was hope i was really hoping that uh the tsunami thing because you know much love to dana swanson uh but uh, i was hoping they would have it on twitter that way i could just raid raid the adult swim thing and just flip it over from here yeah. But sadly, doesn't sound like it. Um, the other thing that someone pointed out in the Twitch uh, chat, the uh, cosplay contest. Hosting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I should... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the winner you was Haku. And those were outstanding. We had a coup. We had Carl. We had uh, we had uh, uh, um, Rick in a portal dress. It was a ball were... gown. Yeah, yeah. That that Those portal were... gown was was pretty. You know, hey, points for creativity, and then uh, takes it off, and it's brown pants underneath. Yeah, you know, uh, boobs and brown pants in the ball gown. That's good. Well, do you, do you know why she wore the brown pants? <laughs> Uh, Look, I don't want. We shouldn't after get Labor that. Day. What? Uh, yeah. I I just want to <laughs> say, uh, and I know I keep saying much love, but much love to Nick Gibbons because uh, he gave us this gem years ago, uh, which I think summarizes what SDCC stands for. SDCC, which stands for Suck Dick Cock Cock. <laughs> that is such an accurate description. Having wow. been there just <laughs> once, and that was enough. That was I enough. went three years in a row, and, and two that of them enough. were just, two of them once were a bit disappointing. Hmm. Once was fine. Once is to my for my my experience. If you're going to San Diego Comic Con, once is probably enough. Because I mean, I think the the first year was fine. It was just starting to get crowded, and then the other two years. Uh, it was just, I had one friend with me the last year I went in 08, I think. And he was like, this is like a Russian subway station. <laughs> so It was insane. It was insane. Absolutely yeah. crazy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, let me pull up the Comic-Con highlights. Cause apparently there was a panel. I can't, uh, find it online. Or maybe it'll be online eventually, but uh, here are the here were the finalists. There, uh, the Carl we were talking about. The one is the warden. Kind of looks familiar to me, but it might be just you know. It's because they were on Instagram. Oh, but I'm I'm wondering if if she was at Dragon Con one year because I remember someone at one of my panels uh, showing up as the warden because we had like. Not a costume contest, but we were giving away prizes and stuff. Um, Is every single finalist female? Actually, it looks like they are, including yeah. including the other picture that uh, surfaced of uh, one of the participants. So every single finalist is a female dressed up as a male? Mm -hmm. It would appear so. Well, assuming Aku <laughs> has a gender. Right. Except for whatever is going on there. <laughs> you mean Dr. Roxo? Dr. Roxo. I'm Dr. Roxo. I do cocaine. I do cocaine. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's fascinating. What does that tell you about the uh, the voters? Uh, <laughs> they, did they do the voting on Instagram? <laughs> yeah. 
their favorite show? I wonder. What is your favorite show? Oh, never mind. Uh, so well, I'm just. Uh, does anybody know the name of the the lady in Koo? Uh, um, she she, left... she popped up on, on the Twitter, Twitter stream. Yeah, she's on Twitter. I like. I think I liked and maybe retweeted her from the AS Central account. But... Well, like uh, the one year I went to to Dragon Con um, many many moons ago, uh, I met uh, Yaya Han. Um, and she does incredible cosplay, and that looks like something she would whip up. Oh, maybe. Uh, I've just been told that the person who plays the warden identifies as male. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh, mea culpa. Uh, yeah, there was... A, I don't know. Uh, but the last picture I was going to show, this is what uh, Lady Aku, even though we don't know what gender Aku is, this is all the goodies that they won including the uh, i guess they can't give them away at this point the 300 thread count venture brother sheets <laughs> god what i'm i'm fucking pissed about that what that is i've been wanting that thread those. counts that, that was great right in my learning who, bed who wants to sleep on those <laughs> i do i have very low standards okay fine <laughs> I mean, we used to, we saw these when they first came out on the old Adult Swim shop, and even Trish was like, 300 thread count? Yeah. Yeah, I wish the old Adult Swim shop, like, I, no offense to Nick Gibbons. Much love to Nick Gibbons. I, much love to Nick Gibbons. <laughs> I love, I love as seen on the Adult Swim, I do. Mm. I try Can to I tune in, but old... unfortunately we have a, a riff night usually, or a game night on this channel, so. I just, I just. I would, I would just like the old adult swim shop back, mm. even for just like a day, just to like get in the like get out the warehouse. Come on, just yeah. and open it have, up for a day. And they have a ton of stuff that they're they're willing to get rid of. You got to. I know, and truck. I am willing to give them money for it. That's I, the thing. I'll I'm give willing them... to pay more than five dollars for these items. <laughs> oh, okay. That's so. That's fascinating. Did you guys see what what just popped up in the uh, the feed here? Uh, Red Guy is saying that uh, Free For All is uh, the Cosplay Cup champion, and she designed for the Met Gala. Oh, wow. So that's not that, that's wow. not amateur. So, so, that's a, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, she, yeah, I remember reading something about that, yeah, or hearing it, didn't you? Huh. She designs for the Met Gala. Is that, that is, is that legal now? Gala. Is that legal? It's like you have I mean, all these people who are putting their costumes together in quarantine, and then you have, uh, I'm kidding. Yeah, the th the free free for all was any cosplay. I'm kidding. I uh, like I did, I did like how they divided it up into categories. So like that, that, that the, was cool. the Met the Met Gala is, is legal. Yeah, I don't think they've outlawed that yet. <laughs> no, I'm saying yeah, from like a, it's only a matter yeah. of time. It's only a matter I, I, of time. I'm saying you have a race between you know uh, a Ferrari and like a Datsun. A Stampa. A st my stanza. A stanza. <laughs> Dog's gonna kill me. Dog's gonna kill me. Yeah. Well, they they had that movie. Uh, it was a uh, Ford versus Dotson. <laughs> yeah, it was a very. It was, it was classic. Classic. <sighs> I mean, it it's not a Yugo, so <laughs> that's what I should have gone with. Nowhere. I should have gone nowhere. Or Ute. Yugo. You and you got you don't know, Barry. <laughs> We're going to Bendigo. <laughs> Sidebar: I've I've had Australian friends tell me, yeah, Bendigo is exactly as they explained. <laughs> Jesus, good lord! Oh boy, oh boy. Um, so, I mean, I guess panel-wise, are we tapped on that? I think so. My Hanks run dry. Mm -hmm. Um, I forget where I am. Oh, here. Um, yeah, what else do we have? Oh, I guess the one thing I, I didn't get to really talk about was the Bob's Burgers panel, but I'll, I'll be quick about that. Basically, I feel like overall the Bob's Burgers panel was the best panel that I had seen as far as structure. Just because, it was yeah, it was, and I don't know if this was just whoever was in charge of that or, or what, because the Archer one was a little bit more like the rest of the panels. 
Whereas the Archer one was perfect because you had the creator, the writers, the supervising producer. You had the cast. They were talking, you know, they were talking about, you know, what's going on now. Uh, joke, making jokes and, you know, showing clips from the new season. And then they brought in, they invited fans onto the Zoom to take some questions. And I think that goes to also, like, to their credit, because the way, um, I forget the name of the production company that does Bob's Burgers. Bento? It's, yeah. The way they've handled... Maybe, uh, it's, maybe it's Bento, then. Because the way they've handled this, uh, the COVID situation is honestly been extraordinary. Hmm. The way that they've handled uh, working from home. Like, they were able to keep their production schedule pretty much Yeah, they said there was, like, a three-day gap, uh, basically, from when they got told they were all going to have to go home to when production at home actually started. Um, Yeah. Like, they were, they, I I think it's just that it's a tightly run ship. Hmm. Maybe. Well, you have to remember, it's a Fox show. It's a Fox show. It's not an Adult Swim show. It's not a mm. FX show. Like it's on Fox. Mm. Fox yeah. isn't Network. fucking around. It's a, maybe like, it's bigger. They're like, <laughs> I'm trying to because because think... FX because but yeah but also Floyd County. I was gonna say like the Archer yeah. panel, had, but also Floyd County has a bit of a William Street vibe. Well, yeah, because they that. they came from William Street because that's where they came yeah. from. Yeah. yeah Although were, a lot of a lot of the people, people a lot of the people who worked on Aquatine and Squids moved over to Bento. Yeah. But much love to Craig Harton. Well, and you know, I think that's actually going to be one of the more interesting things to kind of come out of the the COVID situation. Uh, Bob's Burgers has proven that you can still do adult animation from home and keep going. So mm. I think you're going to see a lot of, you know, production teams pick up that model and you're going to see a lot of, you know, studios and networks unafraid to uh, invest in adult animation because it's one of the easier formats to, to do remotely. It's it's um, it's certainly this is shaping uh, a landscape for uh, renaissance for adult animation because mm. um, a swim a swim uh, because, yeah, you're able to produce it from home. I mean, um, yeah, Archer got delayed, got pushed back, I, like, three months, four months yeah, or something. Yeah. It was, was going to be in May and then got pushed back. Um, but Rick and Morty was on schedule. I think the last few episodes were pretty much exclusively produced from home, or the last back half of them were. Um, and I guess most of the back half of this new season of Archer is going to be from home and it seems like Bob's is on track still. Mm. It's, and it's, what I've heard it's about stuff. Yeah. You can, cause you I've can, heard... the voice actors can record from home. You can animate from home. Oh yeah. Storyboard from home. It's, it's really one of the only mediums that you can produce viably from your house. And have you and heard, you don't have all the, the distribution <laughs> issues of comic books. Yeah. Have you heard about what they're doing with the soap operas and the dramas? Is they're having people, when they're doing kissing scenes, make out with dummies? You don't run into that with animation. You don't have backlogs. You don't have you don't those have... issues. Yeah. And even it's then, the like, if you're filming a scene with someone, you're going to be, you know, there's, there's, you're still going to have to break social distancing. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Like, the dating game is really, really rough right now. You know, oh. if you're going to try to go out there and, and find a dummy... You know, yeah, just, I know. Just, just dummies, dummies are really hard to come by, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, they're all working. I mean, she she married me, so you know, it's dope. You know, she got lucked out. Dude, I would love to see the date packages that come off of that. Like, you know, oh yeah, you can win an all expense paid trip to so and so, and you're both provided with your own human hamster balls. <laughs> <laughs> Hazmat yes. suits. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember a naked gun movie where they did it in the full body condoms? Like that's pretty much. (laughs) I would, I would love that. There's a distinct lack of of face mask porn out there right now, and and I'm frankly I'm disturbed by it. Clearly, clearly clearly you're not looking in the right places. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's. (laughs) I'm looking on Reddit. 
Oh, that was something that Dan Savage was talking about the other day on the Savage Love Cast. He was like, I totally called all these different like like porn trends. He's like, I'm I'm calling masks now. And which of course means that everybody who's a venture fan is already a little bit ahead of the game because like uh, you know, super villainy and super science require good masking. We're masked to achieve- all the time, man. Yeah. That is true. Um, I mean, well, well, speaking really, speaking like, of speaking of porn and masks, <laughs> I'm I I am I have to head out, but uh, I just I want to say <laughs> thank you for for having me. <laughs> yes, th- thank and thank you for coming. You know what? We'll get your plug out of the way. I, I know your co-host, I guess, is going to stick around for a few more minutes. But uh, where you don't know me. What? What? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> you are staying here. So says the werewolf pack. And then it cuts back ten feet, and we find out they're both on a sound stage together. Uh- <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> oh, with the glass, with the stained well, glass window. Okay. I'm like, got it. So you, you kind of go like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that there, and. I'm sorry. I'm very. I'm working on like minimal feuds. Are you Brandon or Travis? Uh, yes. I'm. I'm the one with hair. Uh, I'm Brand. I'm Brandon. Travis is the bald one. Okay. Yeah. So, that's how we. That's how we make that distinction. Well, that's not. That's not fair. But uh, no, it, it is. Every, I mean, every, uh, beans aren't fair. Yeah. <laughs> Genetics. We're just gonna Brandon. Please start plugging whatever you would like to plug. That is not an innuendo. That is the way I say, plug. Good. Get to the plug. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I am one of the hosts of International RSS, the unofficial Rick and Marty podcast, and I also host Submitted for Your Approval, a Twilight Zone podcast on the side periodically. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's fun. Thank you for having me uh, at Barnyard Cruise on Twitter or at Rick and Morty Pod on Twitter. And that is all I have. Uh, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of events they have next year. And seeing if they can consolidate them and make them more of a more more of an event than because it was great, but something that to unify folks to like a single location, as you were saying earlier. Yes, absolutely. And I, I really appreciate you coming in and joining us. And we we've had some fun. We're going to wrap it up sooner than later. But thank you for coming to the show. Thank you so much. Hey, real pleasure, man. It was ple- pleasure to all of you. Thank you. Uh, remember, Travis is the bald. I will. I will receive that pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting into the innuendos. All right, to the masks. It was either innuendos <laughs> or a stanza. In your endo. <laughs> so now I just have to figure out how to leave. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, nice. Um, That's what I'm <laughs> There were a couple of things left on this thing. Wait, did I move them to the wrong thing? Oh, here we go. So I just wanted to ask quickly, did anyone notice any Adult Swim merch related to Comic-Con? I was so busy watching panels, I didn't even look. Oh, okay. I didn't notice anything myself, so I'll just gloss over that. The last thing I wanted to talk about, we had some news that came out in between, and the vent- the helper folk were talking about uh we're alluding to something that was updated in venture earlier do we have any insight on that uh no that's actually just a running joke of ours uh so oh. hey uh Bod villain what's the venture update nothing there's absolutely no fucking update and there never will be <laughs> well there will but... no, there will. Will, will we will we see what no we don't do will we <laughs> We're going to get wins of plans for that. Season eight. We will see it when we see it, and we will be happy with it. Exactly. You know, there was, a quick, there was a quick rush where I kind of always noticed there would be a big movie coming out, and everyone's waiting for it, and then some, like, make-a-wish kid would, like, be like, oh, I'm not going to make it. And, like, can I go see that movie? No kid should ever do that for the Venture Brothers, because they're going to never be able to give them that season. <laughs> oh, <laughs> There's no man. clip for that kid. <laughs> like, that is a shit wish, man. <laughs> What what was your second wish, kid? What was your second wish? You want Rick and Morty? We can give you Rick and Morty. 
We can give you. I have boxes full of Rick and Morty over here. We got animatics. We got all kinds of shit we can show you. you want, Adventure Brothers. Adventure Brothers. Nah. It's kind of like they a, they gonna, a werewolf. A <laughs> beast. What are they going to attack with their progeria wishes? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, use your use your make a wish for something useful, like destabilizing a government or something, kid. Like, yeah. stop waiting around. <laughs> Go out and live some life. It's like if they asked for uh, more Venture Brothers, it's it's the equivalent of going to uh, the toy store and not getting the He-Man figure and getting like the the shitty knockoff lower, lower level guy, or even the knockoff. Me man. Knock me, me man, me man, me <laughs> man. We got me man. That was actually one panel I thought we were going to see, but we didn't, which was uh, Kevin Smith's He Man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, no, no, no. There was something somewhere. I did a quick Google or a YouTube search for just at San Diego Comic Con, and there was some form of. Uh, I don't know if it was an actual about his show or if they were just having an in general like He Man. Uh, convention, but there was something. He's been talking about it on PowerCon because they had they they, they because PowerCon is the big He Man thing every year. Hmm. And, well, literally, uh, uh, it was wait, last you know night on his con. Hold on, go back. Yeah, 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 no, no, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, everyone has uh, a con. Bot BotCon for Transformers is making a comeback yeah. this year, and I'm wondering if there was a like... panel. I just I, I'm not excited about He Man because a part of me is oh. pretty sure that that's part of the reason you that Howard seen the Duck cast, cartoon then. got canceled. Oh, uh, maybe. Uh, I just I, saw I that had... uh, just wrapped up his uh, annual Saturday night Comic Con stand up routine. Oh, that's why he's that's why there's no one here. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, we were up against an, uh, an evening with Kevin Smith tonight. Oh, FYI. Um, oh man. No, I was I wasn't catering to his audience anyway. Scooped much again. much much love to Ken, uh, Kevin Smith. Much for my job. Much love. Um, honestly, though, it sounds like that one's oh, never going to hit con. Uh, they're doing voice work and everything right now. They're about to go into full animation production, and it's I believe slated to still come out around now next year. So there's unless he brings it to con as like a it's out. <laughs> Look at this cool thing we just put out. There's not going to be a con where that really gets, or at least a San Diego con where that gets talked about. Mm. Uh, you know what I like about Kevin Smith? He's the only guy I can think of who's going to stand up in front of a crowd and yell, I brought this to con! Yeah. And get away. <laughs> he may. He may. Um, I did try watching the Thundercats Roar panel. I don't know how anyone else feels about that show. I, I actually enjoyed it. Uh, is that is that's the that's the sort of uh, Teen Titans go the gumball version? Yeah, the cow the cow yeah. arts uh, style. No, 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 no. Let's not call that. Not let's not call. Let's not compare Teen Titans Go to Gumball. <laughs> Hold I on, you're gonna say don't call it the cow arts. Because Gumball is fantastic. Yes. That is a full show. Beauty in motion. I just don't know why they decided to make Toucan Sam look like Gumball. I I don't. I don't, the kids I don't know. It. It's it's the new thing. It's the new thing. All of the shows look the same. Yeah. But anyway, I, I tried watching the Thundercats Roar panel, but it was ba basically the voice cast minus Dana. And I'm like, well, I really don't What's have too point? much. I'm like, you don't have, I don't have too much time to waste on this because it's not really Adult Swim. And also, why isn't Dana on this panel? Where is like, where Justin is Dana? I, I, he's on. He was doing the cosplay cup. He's oh. a werewolf. He's a werewolf. <laughs> he's a werewolf. He works at Adult <laughs> Swim. There are all cryptids. <laughs> much but love we to, established much, this. Much love to Dana Snyder. I, I won't. <laughs> I won't. I won't <laughs> Dana I won't. Snyder's <laughs> probably the only. The only one I would suspect of being like an honest to God Sasquatch. <laughs> yep. He did have a mustache for a while. I know that much. Oh, can I we mean... get that for Calamitous Jane? <gasps> <laughs> for, 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 the collection. For, for the planet Hollywood of mustaches. Oh God. Uh, so Good I'm Lord. just gonna I'm just gonna quickly wrap up the other news that came out. Ballmaster season three is in the works because Christy alluded to it the other night. Cool. Uh, apparently, according to the Reddit, Dave Willis mentioned something about Aqua Teen p potentially returning. 
Oh. So that's interesting. That's big news. And someone uh, someone on the ACPN Discord actually said, you know what? Maybe they should uh, launch it with uh, a new movie. Maybe finally, you know, flip the switch on Death Fighter. That would that would be interesting. Hmm. I don't know. And nice. also on on Discord, and I think it showed up on a few other places. Mike Tyson uh, is not coming back for another season. Mike Tyson got yeah. canceled. Yep. I that was a fun show. I watched I a like couple that. episodes, and he that. I did an interview with that uh, cast and crew, and that was amazing. Mm-hmm. But uh, wait, did you meet Mike Tyson? I, <laughs> I have stories about that pan, that uh, red carpet. Uh, should I say it now? It, it might take a few minutes. Uh oh. Yes. Uh oh. So, Mike Tyson pan, uh, not the panel. Uh, I think Jason uh, Swimcast Jason went to the panel. Correct. I did. It was a weird, weird, weird experience because he was late as hell. And he came in with an entourage of like ton, like twenty fucking people, mm-hmm. in, including like like bodyguards and all this shit. And every question during the Q and A was, "Will you sign this?" Because people want that shit to resell, and they had to purposefully stop the Q and A and tell them, "Ask questions about the show. Stop trying to get them to sign shit." On the on the press side, I've n- I've never had a New York Comic Con press. Uh, panel where the email ends with do not ask him about his personal life and do not ask him about anything except the show and his pigeons. Wait, 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 go back, go back, go back. (laughs) His pigeons? He really has pigeons. Because he had that, he had a show on one of those random networks where it was like him and his pigeons. Vice or something. It wasn't Vice. I think it was like A and E or something, where he had like a one season show about his pigeons. Yeah. Oh no, maybe it wasn't that. Maybe it was about like one of the promotions or something. One of the boxing promotions he was a part of. It it was literally like one thing on on the. It was like one blurb on the bottom of the email where it was like, only talk only talk about these. Like it didn't say. You talk can't. about Mike Tyson mysteries or his pigeons. Yeah. It was basically do not get into anything that has happened to him between 1980 and today. Yeah, don't bring up Mark Antony's speech and Julius Caesar. Lend me your ears, Evander Holyfield. Oh, I wasn't thinking of that either. I was thinking about the one, the other thing. Don't ask about the tigers. Oh yeah, don't Don't ask ask about about the don't ask about the tigers and don't ask about Robin Givens. But you can ask about the pigeons. So yeah. I gotta know. Did you ask about the pigeons, <laughs> Mike? Mike, do you have a pigeon named Robin Givens? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! There's the workaround. Reed, found it. Reed, there you go. Reed and Reed Cooper. Much much love to Reed Cooper. Um, he's in this. Mike, he's in did you sign this pigeon? No, he he said he, he, he does he does red carpet stuff too at New York Comic Con. But he said he asked Mike if any of his pigeons have ever used a gun. <laughs> <laughs> so my my so in closing to this uh my other takeaway from doing that interview he yeah to jason's point he did have an entourage and i don't know if it was like just people they hired off the street like from like privatized like military or something and then like between that and like comic-con like javits center personnel but he had like literally like two guys were standing off to the side two guys were standing off to the other side two guys uh, behind the camera, two guys at the door, and then one guy, I think it was like his publicist or something, he was holding a book. So it's like all these guys surrounding him as you do the the interview. I'm like, <laughs> is this to protect him, me, or is someone coming in to attack oh, him? Both. All of the above. There, yeah, I mean... You're totally going to take down former heavyweight champion of the world, oh, Mike Tyson. Oh, yeah, me, Mr. <laughs> I think, Mr. Socially Awkward, uh, I think at the time, two, 245 pounds, maybe, uh, of diabetic mess. Yeah, I'll take him down. Not muscle? <laughs> if only you brought nickel chips. <laughs> <laughs> gotta buy, you gotta, gotta put the nickel nips. So anyway, I just, 
I think that was old. That. Uh, uh, the, the, you've got like strong heavy guy, strong heavy guy, heavy guy, heavy guy, heavy guy, and he's like, we we need someone with like a book. Could we have like a guy with a book follow me around? So like he just has like a nice little offset to the whole thing. Like you don't want to be too intimidating. You need like a little guy. With guy. A and and book. I don't. Why, why, Mike? Why is he following you? I, I just like a guy with a book. Like, <laughs> like did you, did you see what the book was? Was it an illustrated book or? <laughs> No, it, it looked like a notepad of some kind. So maybe it was like his itinerary for the day. It, like. it was, it was, no, it was, it was, it was, the, it was his death note. That's what it was. It was the ah. death note. He wrote people down in it. Oh God. If oh, like they the asked questions. But yeah, rest, rest rest not, no, it's like death note for pigeon. <laughs> it's like he's writing yeah. down pigeon names. Oh God. And this one. And this one. <laughs> oh, that pigeon over there. Better watch that pigeon over there. You're in the pigeon death note book. You're in the pigeon zone. <laughs> Sponsored by werewolves. And Boylans. And, Bo- and Boylans. <laughs> and Pringles. And Pringles. So I think we're we've hit the end of the show. It's officially just about midnight on the East Coast. Um yeah. I thank everyone in the chat who is there. I think everyone and in your y'all in Discord are going to get the chance to plug your own goodies and whatnot. Um, I should yeah. mention also, I don't have a a thing up for that. Yeah, grand prize run. You know, you know what? I'll, I'll put up on the screen. There you uh, go. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll put uh, a winner is you. Hang on. Winner is you. Hang on. All yeah. your podcasts are belong to us. There we go. That's how we'll end this. Um, That'll do. Um, so I haven't really promoted this yet, but a- ACPN is the parent company of Adult Swim Central going forward. Uh, and this is their uh, Twitch stream. Well, they're there because I'm behind that. And I'm doing quotations to a screen that doesn't see me doing quotations of the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, but Art Comedy Pop Culture Network runs the show now. Uh, this is their Twitch. You can find them on the web at acpnet.net, uh, where we do mainly. We started out as podcasting. That's where uh, Mr. Chops and I do uh, Pop Culture Anonymous. We do Swimcast. We do uh, Dana Snyder actually has a show that he occasionally does with uh, another dude uh, about Disney sh- uh, Disney theme parks and drinking, um, <laughs> and like all kinds of entertainment and comedy. What? Together or separate? What do you mean? Drinking, Drinking. in Disney parks. Oh, yeah. They Toge- go together. Together, because they, they talk <laughs> about the cocktails that are... Like, either, those could just be, like, very different culture shows or, like, an yeah. awesome pairing. I wasn't sure which it was. Well, I mean, it's, it's an awesome pairing. It's an awesome pairing because it's Dana Snyder. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, nice. And, and other entertainment stuff. We we branched out into audiovisual, and we're bringing back Adult Swim Central, hopefully full-time. So if anyone wants to write for us, get in touch somehow. Um, or the pot or the swim cast. Cause that's, you know, we only do that every couple of years or months or something. Um, and all the goodies, uh, as the, <laughs> I need to change the picture. Yeah. You can't <laughs> say as all the goodies. As I'm Just saying all the them. goodies. Yeah. All like the goodies. all the goodie, the goodies, a discord, uh, chat that we have. Patreon, if you want to donate money, I know in pandemic a lot of people, you know, money is strapped for cash and whatnot. But we we have a whole Patreon system where one dollar a month gets you a lot of awesome stuff. Uh, twenty dollars a month actually gets you the first person who donates at the twenty dollar tier actually gets a season one, a season five, Blu-ray of Venture Brothers, uh, among other goodies. Awesome season. <laughs> among among other goodies. <laughs> Among other goodies uh, that are not any of the goodies, not not that we're on. not not Lady uh, Doctor Rock. <laughs> like, you ever see a picture that reminds you of an entire website, like something? <laughs> I was gonna say Goatsy, but yeah, that. <laughs> Reed's asking, can can he win win the goodies? I don't think so. I mean, may, oh. I don't I don't know her life. So she may be married or something. I would. I don't know if her husband would her, condone her that. Her, if she... her, her uh, I'm pretty sure she's making an appearance at HatchetCon. <laughs> mm. 
I was gonna say maybe she's maybe she's going to AVN. Maybe. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna hand this off to to all of you fine gentlemen. Thank you again for coming. Uh, let's start from the top. Uh, shit, I'm no good with names when multiple people. Oh, you're the you're Baron Beast Lamode, host of Conjectural Technologies on Helper Network. Let me move these as you talk about your stuff yeah. and things. Uh, so we are the Hinch Life Pirate Radio Network uh, for all of your Venture Brothers in Super Science podcasting needs. Um, we have Conjectural Technologies. Uh, we do a Venture Home News segment. And of course, uh, Rilo Ward here is one of the fantastic co-hosts of the Guild of Calamitous Podcasts. Um, we do Conjectural Technologies with... Uh, you know, Professor Savage and Vaude Villain. Uh, we roll pretty deep because the truth about the Venture fan universe is uh, it's really lonely and it's very hard to get people to watch Venture Brothers. So if you experience that and you need some sort of uh, support group, we are here for you. And we're enablers. It's true. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, I'm posting the... Uh... There. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so this is a thing that maybe people can say. You know what? Let me put it in a better font. Maybe that's better. It worked. It works for one person. It doesn't work for multiple people. So let's I try. Love let's try uh, Comic thing. Sans as the default, right? <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Oh boy. There what about hell yet? No, you know hell what? yeah! <laughs> what? Hell, there's a hell? Hell yet a hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, Helvetica. Yeah, I guess that's, <laughs> no, a, that's I guess that's a standard one one we can use. And it looks pretty. It looks very it's pretty. So use wingdings. That's, no. That's, <laughs> that's so, legible. So yeah, Baron, uh Professor Doc, uh I'm losing my mind. Uh, oh, good. Uh, Rilo, Rilo, Rilo Vaudeville, and thank you so much. And if anyone else has any parting thoughts before they go, um, I I'm, do. Yeah. Uh, I would like to thank you for allowing us to drag you into our podcast length format. Yeah, but see, <laughs> but see we hit the three hour mark. This is the three hour is, mark. This is, this is late 2000 early 2010 swim cast so th like i said dino was on for two over two hours and he peed and he didn't wash his hands and he admitted it he didn't so, wash it he's a gross man <laughs> no comment there he touched all those microphones he touched First all of the microphones and then he tried him. and then he tried to pour his bottle of vodka in his bottle of water and keith crawford had to stop him are you oh. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm that was that was a big deal. Um Travis. Yes. Oh, Travis. thank God my brain is still kind of there. Yeah. Uh well, I know course. I know Brandon <laughs> plugged the show earlier, but as I'm moving things around, I'm not good with coordination. Uh why don't you <laughs> tell us about a little bit more? If uh you well, yeah, or so if you have anything uh, else to plug. Yeah, we, we do uh, all of our podcasts under the Apathetic Enthusiasm brand. So you can catch streams from us on Twitch and YouTube every Mondays at 9 Eastern at twitch.tv slash apathetic enthusiasm or, uh, or youtube.com slash apathetic enthusiasm. And uh, yeah, we cover pop culture, all kinds of things over there. And then, uh, yeah, follow us over at apatheticenthusiasm.com. You can catch all of your stuff over there. I wonder if I spelled it right. It's apath... I don't know if you see it. Uh, I'm sure they won't care. Yeah, it's close enough. It's not clickable, so it's fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> write it down, kids. <laughs> write that down. Um, so, oh, Jason Chops. I do love that. You got anything to plug? Yeah, you throw up... Uh jpollardvo.com and make sure to hit the acpn.net check out our podcast when we get back to it hopefully get some more video game streaming going on here too looking forward to that but well of know. course well that's the big thing we we do 
every Tuesday night we try and do that at ACP Net, um, where <laughs> I really have bad. That is not me. I am not on the screen. <laughs> now he's on the screen. Um, oh, where and the tsunami panel? <laughs> oh, is there actually a tsunami panel? Because I was told there was not. Yeah, just started. Yeah. Oh, where is it? Online. No, but I'm saying, is, is it on? <laughs> is, the it on is it on Twitch so I could rate it? Japan somewhere? <laughs> no, I'm saying, is, think... is it on Twitch? Because I'll rate it. I'll rate the shit out of it, like in two minutes. Should be yeah. On Adult, uh, yeah. On adult Swim. Yeah, it's on Adult Swim on Twitch. All right, so we'll go there in a minute. Uh, Jason Swimcast, did you have anything to plug? Nope. All right, so you know I don't what? do anything. <laughs> you do the Swimcast. That's it. I do uh, the swimcast. Everybody listen to the swimcast. Everybody That's listen great. to the swimcast. Everyone listen to all the fine programming on acpnet.net. Uh, and please, please, please come back to us. Uh, we do a 24-7 stream of, like, random crapola and, and some good stuff. Uh, I shouldn't say random crapola, but uh, there is some awesome content that streams 24-7. Uh, movies, content, uh Co uh, comedy, cartoons, short films, music. And if you have any of this, uh, please submit it to twitch at acpnet.net because we're always looking for new stuff. Um, we're always streaming cool stuff. Uh, maybe if Dragon Con's going to do anything, maybe we can come back and do this again. Uh, but we also do live riffing, uh, like Mystery Science Theater. We do live game show, uh, not game show, ga uh, video game stuff on Tuesday nights. So we're really trying to entertain people during this these troubled times these and trying times these trying times and i am going to raid the shit out of adult Sw it's just adult swim isn't it yeah if you go to so. adultswim.com presents slash con uh you can scroll down and you can just click the link to go to the watch now i'll go ahead and post it in the uh i'll go ahead and post the link in twitch uh, it says available after twelve ten a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, and, and guess like what? That. It's twelve ten on the dot. So, you know what? Can I? And they have special announcements and exclusive Ooh. content. Let me Ooh. see. You know what? I'm just gonna look on my, myself right now and just make sure. Adult Swim. Just to see if they're here. Check out this stream from three days ago. No. Are they? Oh, so it's not going to be on Twitch. It's going to be on the website. Mixer. Yeah, that's I'm on what the website it, right now. It's going to be on Mixer, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> All right. Mixer. So, I mean, if they're on, I'll raid them. If not, if you guys want to stay tuned for the normal stuff, the, the normal stuff. Uh, otherwise, uh, this has been a blast. I am glad I had the brain power to put this together and. Hopefully, again, we can do some more stuff in the future. And we get through everybody on the plugathon. I think we did. Does anyone miss them? Trish, Trish would have plugged her cats. Um, <laughs> I think that's... I got a new cat named Gary Fisher. Ah, well, if y'all come back, Gary Fisher we, on Instagram. If y'all come back, if we have another one of these for like Dragon Con or whatever, then you'll have to talk to Trish because that's that's usually her icebreaker question. But uh, anyway, uh, thanks everyone for showing up, coming, attending. I hope your Comic Con and S Swim Con were awesome. And stay tuned for crazy stuff. Good night, everybody. Hey, thanks. All right. Have a good night. Good night. Spanakopita! 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 <laughs>